Damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! Shivers and everybody podcast episode 165. We got special guests in the building, man. We got a lot of hats. You know what I'm saying? He a motherfucking father, a professional hooper, trainer, coach, and one third of the No Blood, No Foul podcast, man. We got my dog Jay Young Blood. Man, so I appreciate you having me. Oh, man. yeah, for sure, man. It. Everything smooth with you? Man, everything A1, man. Blessed, blessed to be here, man, and blessed to be doing what I'm doing right now, man. In for sure. this space. For sure, man. Like I said, I'm glad we ain't got to talk about rap, man. You know what I'm saying? We can finally <laughs> talk about some hoops. I love hoops. You know what I'm saying? But before we start and get into your whole little journey and stuff, we start everything off with a salute me while I'm here. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before, you know what I'm saying? We give them flowers. We made that mm -hmm. long Facebook post about how yeah. we loved him or her yeah. instead of telling them why he can still receive the love. But it can't be the normal. It can't be kids if you're in a relationship, if you mm -hmm. your parents. It got to be somebody out of that immediate circle. So you got somebody you want to go show some love to? Show some love to. Uh... Man, you know what? I'm gonna shout out my homie uh, Security D. Security okay. D. That's the homie, man. Uh, man. We just been like tapped in consistently sure. since I've been home. Mm -hmm. uh, that shit was like a little. It was a transition. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But he been there in my corner, bro. Like uh, supporting the training brand. Yeah. Uh, just you know what I'm saying? Just talking to the homie. You know, you just, sometimes you just gotta go ho holler at the homie, man. Just for talk sure. the real shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and sure. he one dude that always give me his honest opinion yeah. and support whatever I'm doing. So shout out uh, Security D. And that's, the, and that's the person like when you, because of course you got, you know what I'm saying, those easy people you can talk to, but that's the person that's going to be non-biased, going to give you the real. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we we need those, dog. Yeah. Those ones are going to tell you when you acting like a, you know what? Yeah, nah, <laughs> for sure. And then, and then how you looking at things from a different perspective as well. You know what I'm saying? It's like sure. real important that you got the homies that had you step outside your shoes for a minute and see, like, you know no. what I'm saying, break down certain scenarios. No, and that's a fact. That's a fact, man. Shout out to those ones that keep it real, man, because mm -hmm. I don't like that that whole, you just lying to, you know what I'm saying, spread my feelings. Oh, shit. You right, feel yeah. me? Because me and my wife, like, I tell her, like, we got to keep it real with each other. You know what I'm saying? Got my to. kids, everybody, my homies, like, if we don't, then who is? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's the, uh, like, bro, that's, I'm, I'm so glad you're talking about that because just on the strength of, like, having yes man around you when you at a certain point, that shit is, like, it really hurt you. You no, know what I'm saying? Sure. We even seeing it right now, like, kind of with Jock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, like, yeah, fast, fast. And, and, and I, I just know, like, he young, man. We make those mistakes when we young. But at the same time, it's, like, real important to make sure that you got some people around you that no. pull you to the side and be like, yo, I ain't gonna hold you up, fam. Like you, you fucking up. Yeah, like, no, you know what I'm sure, saying? Yeah. Like them people are very valuable. So bro. you think it is with, with like that situation in particular and things that's similar to that. You think it's like people that's around us knowing he fucking up, but really don't want to say anything because he the person up there with the money who paying everybody who doing stuff for people like, oh. and they are afraid that shit. If I tell him how I really feel, he gonna. Tell me to get the fuck on. I mean, nah, for sure. That's exactly what go on. <laughs> that's exactly what go on. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta think about it. Like if they kind of like mess up the groove or the vibe. He on some shit like, hey man, make, make sure the so and so ain't around here later on. For sure, yeah. Now so and so like, man, fuck, man, yeah, man, yeah, keeping yeah. it too damn real, yeah, man. Hell sure, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. That's but, how that should be, bro. But, but then, like I say, um, that that's that's not having enough vets in the locker room to me too, cause like oh, you can say what you want about your Dallas Haslam, mm -hmm. but if he was on that Memphis squad, he would have been poor dog to the side. Oh like, yeah, UDs are very valuable in the NBA, bro. Yeah. Like just in general, bro, like, even in high school, just having an OG, now, mm -hmm. he might not even play that much, but just somebody that can pull you to the side more mature, like, seeing di things from a different lens mm -hmm. to help you out. Like, you need that on the journey, bro. Yeah, when man. people are so valuable, and that's what the Grizzly missing. Yeah. That's why I think Marcus Smart, I think that was a good, oh, for sure. good pickup. Yeah, I think that's man. exactly what they yep. need, bro. Somebody getting their ass real quick who been there, who know yeah. the game and shit. Because, you know, he went through his own little problems when he was transitioning from mm -hmm. college to the NBA. And, ain't no, and also, he not no square. You know yeah, what I'm saying? for sure. Like, you know, you got your the kiss asses. You know what I'm saying? They gonna all <laughs> kiss sure. coach your ass. You know what I mean? Do everything coach say, snitching on the players. <laughs> Hell yeah. Them dudes always keep a job. But like, you know, the the homies that you can really talk. You know what I'm saying? Chop it up with. They mm -hmm. they just respect it from the coaches and the, and the GMs. Like sure. you need them guys on the team to connect Fast. with the young ones. You Hell know what I'm yeah. saying? Hell yeah, man. Hopefully, Jock gets his shit together, man. He will for sure. Bro. You know, he can't. Like Gilbert said, at this point when he come back, he just got hoop. Yeah, he's got, and we know he can do that, and that's gonna be his escape for real, for real. So I think like he gonna once he get back from the uh, suspensions, he gonna turn up. Yeah, but that twenty five games gonna mess up his money with the whole 
NBA first team, second team, whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's going to. It's just an L that you got to take, man. It's only one year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he'll he bounce back he, for he, sure. He'll he bounce back for sure. But yeah. uh, I just think that uh, I think he'll be cool, man. He's just going through the. Through the, the trials and tribulations for of sure. a youngin, you know for what I'm sure, saying? For sure, for sure. We see what's ain't going through right now, too. Zion, man, you know what I'm saying? Oh, right man, <laughs> bro, dog. That shit was so shocking. Bro, bro, because he's like, he like a, a, a square, chill dude who could hoop, you know what I'm saying? But like my man said, we see him on ESP, I mean, ESPN High School dunking on niggas, but we really don't know who he is, you feel me? Yeah, dog, them be the ones, bro. Yeah. Them be the ones. <laughs> Nigga out here, boy. Niggas that go to church every Sunday. To be, like, them be... And she keep adding them every day. <laughs> adding him, the NBA, the Pelicans. Like, oh, we got she... the tape coming. Yeah, nah. She, Because you know what? She she feeding into that attention as well. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? She mm -hmm. see her name constantly in the spotlight. Anything she do, nah, it's a headline. For sure. She about to act the damn fool. For sure, right? for sure. See, I want to... All right, okay, I want to get on to the growing up part, but okay. just with that part right there, you, you play professional ball, you play college ball, like... How is it to identify that woman that you know? Just you know what I'm saying? You know that she should just be a hitter. <laughs> but, <laughs> dog, dog. but she messed up the whole thing. Like and you gotta be smart to know how to play these chicks, like, you know what I'm saying, when you when you coming up in the game. Dog, that shit is is hard. Like, especially <laughs> if you ain't experienced. See, like, I'm be real with you, bro. Like I grew up in the church. For bro, sure. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like sure. I grew up in the church. Mm. I had one girlfriend in high school. Okay. So when the basketball success came in. It was like something new. I'm like, damn, nigga, she like me? <laughs> like, <laughs> for sure. Oh, then, yeah, yeah, bro, she said she like, she fucking with me. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That was my vibe. But then, like, it, it's hard to kind of, I mean, you know the ones that fuck with you. For sure. But at the same time, you young and, and like, I be talking about this with my homies all the time. Like, damn, nigga, I lost some, like, some, 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 some good, good women, bro. Yeah. I'm fucking some shit up. You for know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just, uh, you got to be mature, man. I think at that age, like, if I can rewind time, I'll be like, Nigga, hey, slow down. Like, yeah, shit, just, yeah. just keep moving at your pace. You moving at a good pace, but yeah, man. Yeah, once you get lost in that sauce, it's a wrap. I'm thinking about <laughs> if I had the money, I got, I was messing up being broke. So I could just, oh, shit. I could just imagine. Like, that's, a, that's another monster right there, bro. Like, I, I mean, we can get into it, but I know we're going to get into it later on down the line. But it's just like that whole scenario right there, bro, you got to be, I'll be telling the youngest, bro, y'all got to be mature. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about, and then you want to be with a girl, like, you can't spend. I be seeing cats on their IG just constantly like I'm talking to my girlfriend. I'm doing with my girlfriend. Duh, I'm like, bro, for sure, for sure. Heading down the wrong. Duh, it's <laughs> funny. Cause my, my son is uh he he going to 11th grade and 10th grade now. Okay. And um that's why I was telling him he got his first little girlfriend like I think like freshman year going to 10th grade. Mm -hmm. So I'm like I'm noticing the things like <laughs> grades perfect. Uh -huh. A's B's. As soon as he get a little girlfriend, he's standing up at night waking up late. You know, say gray slipping a little bit, uh, ain't trying to go to practice for real. Like, bro, hey. <laughs> listen to me, dog. Hey, you, you gonna have this know, problem, you yeah. Your whole life, you gonna have this issue with women. Hey, baby, you trying to stay on the phone with? Exactly. Me? <laughs> I'm about to look no, down too. Uh, no, that, I, that'd be the vibe. bro. His phone <laughs> is his alarm, of course, and. I'm like, dog, his phone keep going voicemail. I'm like, this motherfucker, then stay yeah. on the phone, fell asleep on this motherfucker, dog. <laughs> bro, like, one of my closest homies, man, like, uh, I ain't gonna say his name, but, like, one of my closest homies, like, he was, when we was in high school, bro, this dude was, like, <laughs> ranked top. And I'm not saying it's the only reason he ain't making it hoops, mm -hmm. but this was, like, one of them. He even tell you, like, bro, them the ladies, bro, had them all messed up, For sure. you know what I'm saying? Because he, sure. he was at a certain pinnacle. But the focus, you know what I mean? The focus wasn't there, and it just kind of like drills, drills, drills yep. down from yep. where he was. So it's like, to and all the youngest, bro, y'all got that. That's always going to be gonna there, be bro, forever, forever <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah, forever. Fast, because like I said, <laughs> it's going to be a bigger problem. So right now, just focus mm -hmm. on them focus hoops or whatever yeah, you're doing bro. in school. Yeah. That's it. You yeah, know what I'm you know, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, you can hear it, bro. For sure. Just, man, look, you got to prioritize. Yeah, say, don't have them be up here, and then everything else is beneath. You know what I'm saying? And as soon as him and his little girlfriend had the little heartbreak, and just, oh. I, I call his mama like, hey, listen, talk to uh, talk to him real quick, cause you know I don't know what to say real. <laughs> Man, look, so like my oldest son, he, I mean, <laughs> he first heartbreak, bro. He was in the kitchen playing. Heartbreak songs and shit. I said, bro, if you don't get your shit together, man, come no, on, man. For sure. You gotta bounce back, baby. You good, yeah. dog. You yep. good, but... yep. And then as soon as that happened, <laughs> Graves was back where he supposed to be. Yeah. He hooping and stuff and all that junk. So yeah, kids, dog. Trust me, them, them girls gonna be there. Forever. Forever in your life. Even even when you got a situation, when you don't, they're gonna be right there in your mm -hmm. face. <laughs> Facts, bro. For real. Now, uh, how your year been so far, man? Like I know you you know what I'm saying, you training, you coaching, you got the podcast, like what's been going on with you personally this year? Uh, it's been a good year, bro. Like this was my first year coaching in uh, high school basketball. So I was at um Detroit Crystal Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a great adjustment. I, it was a huge adjustment actually, you know what I'm saying? Because I was just doing the training mm -hmm. and teaching and mentorship and whatnot. But adding that on, man, is a uh, it's a challenge. It's challenging me mentally mm -hmm. and uh, 
I'm enjoying the challenge, bro, because sure. uh, I'm learning more about myself, mm-hmm. learning more about my about my players and learning how to connect with them a little bit more. So mm-hmm. got that going. The training been going good. We're still faith and focus training. For sure. Uh training kids all the way from seven all the way up to college players, pros. Um that's been going great. Mm-hmm. Way more consistent this year. And the podcast, man, the podcast it's uh it's doing real good, bro. Yeah. Like a lot of people rocking with it. Hell um, yeah, man. It's, dope it's, as hell. It, it's bringing the light to our players, which was the whole purpose behind it. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm enjoying it, man. So it's been a blessed year, for bro. For sure. Hell Straight yeah. blessed year. Hey, we definitely well, I want to tap into all three of those. I ain't going to keep you for five hours because we could have a part one, two, and three when it's coming to this, like, yeah. this sports shit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, like, like growing up, you already talked about, you know what I'm saying, with the kids and stuff, dog. Mm-hmm. But what, growing up, what was the first, you felt like, first adult decision you had to make in life? Like, like damn, this, this shit getting real. Like, I had to make that real transition from being a little kid to this. You know what I'm saying Growing life Shit When I retired Yeah Like I ain't gonna lie Like And that's what This is some real shit Like I'm glad we having This conversation Like mm. This might be a damn Therapy session <laughs> this bitch. So nah So That was um, Like when I was like God damn Like bro Like had to come back here Had to get a job That was like A major adjustment bro yeah. Cause from day one All I did was hoop Yeah cause you played what Eight years in Lebanon right Played eight years in Lebanon I played four years in Austria I played in uh, Saudi I played in Qatar Played mm-hmm. in Venezuela Okay um, So I did a total of like 13 years overseas So that's been my job For 13 for years sure, yeah. bro. Like that's I ain't your, really yeah, did too much But prep for The season and the off season mm-hmm. And then in the season I'm just focused on hoops Okay But um Man after that last season In Qatar bro When I came back here <laughs> That's what, that was like, oh shit, all right, I gotta I gotta really buckle up, strap up and figure shit out. For sure. And uh I ain't gonna lie, bro, like I my first gig I got I was working at Amazon mm-hmm. and then but that shit like bro, I think I I I, I for sure got caught in a state of depression. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, dog, the death like I'm telling you, man, like when you hooping that long and, and you know what I'm saying, consistently working out, consistently playing in games. Yeah. Bro, ain't shit gonna replace that. For sure, ain't doing something you love. But ain't shit gonna replace this. J, 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 J. The fans, bro, like, that shit was just like, not. Nah, I come home, it's the silence, nigga. It's like, yeah. you ain't, they not who rooting for you. Your fam, for sure, for who sure, always, always. Been, they, your homies. But, nigga, we talking about 3,000 yeah, people, 4,000 sure. people, and they're saying your name consistently every week. Every, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I come home to the silence, and it's just like, nigga, I feel like I was lost, dog. And I'll never forget, my cousin asked, like, he's like, Hey, cuz you think you uh, you might be depressed? Yeah. Like, nigga, fuck depressed, nigga. <laughs> yeah, like, Hell no, no, nigga. I got everything I need. I'm good. Like, yeah. but that's like that's the one of the states, nigga. Denial. Yeah. Exactly. So it was just exactly. like, bro. I kind of like went to this little bubble for a minute. COVID hit. That's when that shit got worse. It got even worse, yeah. nigga. I'm just like, nah. Nigga, me and my wife kind of going through it and shit. Me and my ex wife going through it, man. And it was just a whole barrage, bro. So yeah. I had to like, nigga. Got in the tunnel for a minute, kind of just got stuck to myself. Yeah. And that's why I say I think Smooth, like Smooth really was like the homie that was like, nigga, come, like, you good, bro? Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he always stay positive. I don't care how bad shit is. Smooth, sure. like, yeah, man. you know what I mean? But, hey, you got this, though, and this rolling like this. And, and it helped me pull. It, it was like a healing process fucking with him and his fam. Like, shout out to him and his wife, Dior. For sure, but yeah. it was like a healing process, dog. So when I got out of that shit, bro, it was like, now nah, I'm ready to. I'm ready to get rolling. Now I'm ready to start to work. I'm ready to start training. I'm really, really pushing the envelope. So now, like, I felt like it manifested everything that I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's important. Just having that, having that person to to talk to, man. Like, Mm -hmm. when you going through that shit, because we ain't all been through it, man. Shit, I ain't been through it probably recently. Like, I be, Mm -hmm. you know, saying sometimes you hide behind what you're doing, like this podcast, or you Mm -hmm. laugh the shit off. Try not to show Mm -hmm. the pain, because as a man, you think like I can't show pain. I can't show this shit. I can't show frustration. And the main thing (laughs) that be going through a nigga head, bro, is like, hey, how they gonna look at me? Yeah. How they gonna perceive me if I'm doing this? For sure. And and not until like Brian gonna hold you up. Maybe like a year. It was like, man, you know, bro, fuck it. You gotta. Bro, just do you. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Yeah. Be you. Like, it don't even matter, bro. Just get the shit done. You for know sure. what I'm saying? No, so, for sure. Hell yeah. That's been uh, the drive, the motive the whole year. Yeah. And it's been presenting more and more opportunities um, in the flow. You know what, what I'm saying? That, what was that one thing, though, that was kind of, like, led to the breakthrough all, completely, like, from being, like, you know what I'm saying, down yourself and fig- figuring things out? Um, just looking, I think, just, bro, self-evaluation, bro, just kind of looking in the mirror. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? This whole journey, it was like, um... This, this this basketball career, bro, is like I grew up 
watching comic books and my superheroes and shit like the X-Men and mm -hmm. you know Wolverine so nigga my character was the basketball player that's what I like being all the time you know yeah. what I'm saying but it was like though not that shit over bro you gotta be you gotta be Jay Youngblood now bro mm -hmm. like so the self-evaluation of really looking in the mirror seeing that I had fucking around and lost some people that I I'm talking about like lost relationships with people I really cared about yeah, yeah. it was just like damn bro you, you kind of you got to slow down, bro. You got to, like, really figure out who the fuck you are. For sure. And make some some decisions. So, would you say, like, to a young dude coming up, like, sometimes, like, when you coming up, especially in this day and age with social media, they only, they only focus is basketball. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, like, after retirement, you kind of, like, had to figure things out. So, you think they should start off early, like, like not just putting it all into basketball, even though you want to be the best, but you still got to figure out who you are away from the game. So, when that time comes, yes, bro. you can figure that you shit out. You got to. You got to, man. Like, that's one thing that, like, not even with my players... Like we, I, I, I talked to my. We asked about takeaways. We ask takeaways after every workout. Mm -hmm. So I'm not. I don't want you just coming here working out and dipping out. Like I'm trying to figure out like what you learn. Just shout out to my homie Stout. Shout out to my homie Toby. They, they the ones that really kind of like put me on to that. Okay. And it's like you training the brain of the, of the, of the youngin. You know what I'm saying? It's not mm -hmm. just a hoop game because all this is gonna translate over into life. You For know sure. what I'm saying? No, how, fact, how you approach this shit, bro, is gonna translate over to life. I guarantee it. So. You gotta um damn I kinda went away from what the original question. Oh just 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 figuring out as a young and like not just putting your all into yeah, basketball. That's what it was. All yeah. right, so making sure that it's like some type of balance, bro, of doing other things. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, just working this, man. You got we so creative, bro. No, facts. We, we so creative, but sometimes a lot of things like we we put ourselves in this bubble and we limit ourselves. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When we was kids, bro, we used to run outside, play in the woods, play <laughs> all three sports, <laughs> baseball, trees, basketball, football, for sure. Jumping off stuff, dog, like and that's what I try to do with my son, bro. Just like, I know he love basketball. I know he love the game. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, I'm also trying to, like, I want him to do other things. I want him to get outside. I want him to, uh, you know what I'm saying, just write certain things, ask some questions. I need you to write this off for me. I need you to, yeah. you know, just train his that's brain, important. bro. Because I don't want him to, like, that's my, I feel like this is my number one purpose in life right now, bro. Making sure to help him when he run into them same hurdles or yeah. help him avoid them yep. hurdles. Yeah, so you can remember those conversations yeah. and all that you junk that I mean? you had with him. He can go ahead and navigate through that junk with mm -hmm. the ease. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I remember when um I had hoop dreams, but you got straight out, you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but uh, I remember like every time somebody asked me what I want to be, I always said, you know, basketball, basketball NBA player, and stuff. Basketball player, bro. But now you, like, you really got to have an option B, C, D. No, like, you got to. Bro, it's so much because it's like, man, I, I it, it was other grinds that we could have been pursuing while we was doing like while I was playing the game like my man. homie my homie Neek man shout out to my homie Neek yeah. he he Neek was always writing always mm -hmm. rapping always you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. that was that was his hobby but it, it kept his brain training you know For what I'm sure. saying yeah, yeah. his transition been so smooth from him retiring like he done went straight into trucking mm -hmm. and you know what I mean it's just like I could tell like bro like he was doing other things outside of the game me yeah. I was just on some like nigga yeah, for and, and, yeah. And, and now I'm not I'm not taking anything away from it because it brought a lot of success. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Relationships I'm with command. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, is do, you do want that balance. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You want because I hey, you know, as a kid, plan B, bro. My plan B is to make plan A. Work. <laughs> Hell yeah, that was that sure. was the saying. That was <laughs> the, sure. like when <laughs> teachers used to ask certain questions and shit. Yeah. I had all the quotes to that will fuck them up and have them thinking like twice. <laughs> like yeah, no, nah, basketball is it. Yeah, and if it ain't it, then. It ain't nothing to life. Like, for saying sure, some wild yeah, shit like sure, that as a kid. Sure, but yeah. you, it's just that because you, you don't want to think yeah. about nothing else, bro. Man. But we got to train our brains, and bro. it's funny. I remember, like, I liked to hoop, but my brother was, like, cold, man. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my brother Malcolm, man. He was hooping at King uh, um, with Coach Brooks because Coach Brooks had took over at the time. Okay. Then he had left his senior year, even though he shouldn't have done, shouldn't have did that. He went to consulting with Coach Al. Rest in peace, Coach Al, man. Mm -hmm. But he was hooping and stuff like that, mm -hmm. whatever. And, um... My mom was like, man, maybe you should focus on coaching. When I was like 16, 17, I'm like, coaching? What you trying to say? I can't hoop? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so she's like, no, this is the way you talk to your brother. Like, you seem like you'll be a good coach. Like, mom, you tripping. Man. Later on down the line, what, what I'm doing? Coaching. Coaching. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Coaching. And so it's like, dog, like, she's seeing it and you still with the game. You still teaching. You still you, you still learning. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because the kids teach you. I'm quite sure you learn stuff from your players being a coach. And man, shit. all the time, bro. They teaching me to this day, bro. Like, yeah. I learned. That's why I like. Like, some of my kids, like, I had to really slow down and understand, like, bro, think of yourself at 15 and mm -hmm. remember yourself at 15, bro. Mm -hmm. You was clumsy. You weren't coordinated, bro. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You was, you got to remember that person. Now, yep. remember that person 
And imagine him trying to train with somebody consistently that know the game, mm -hmm. and that's on your ass. Cause I, I was like, yo, you gotta slow down, bro, and you gotta teach them yeah. step by step, fundamental Man. by fundamental, and then we'll build on all of that. But yeah. so that's what it taught me. It taught me like, yo, you gotta connect, bro. Stop just demanding it and connect. You connect, mm -hmm. bro. You get way more. They'll go so much more harder for you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, for sure, for sure. Since we stay on this before we get into your your, your come up, okay. I always ask people this, dog. When the last time you cried, and what was the reason, dog? Sheesh. <laughs> Damn, when was the last time I cried? Yeah. Man, not to be on no side like bro, but my grandma passed, so she okay. passed. So that was the that was the last time I cried, bro. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. shout out to my grandma, bro. She was a beautiful sure. woman. Man. Uh real, real instrumental part of my life coming up, dog. For like, sure, yeah. Dog, yeah. do they still make grandmas like they used to? Like, <laughs> like bro. Like dog, like Dude, no, nah, I like man, for her, like see for me with her, she was just like I think my grandma spoiled. I, I I know she spoiled me, bro. I was her number one, like I was her first born grandchild. For sure. But grandmas just got this love, bro. It's just like, man, they make you think like you, you the best looking kid mm -hmm. in the world. Hey, you will never go hungry. Yep. Like it ain't no problems no. in this where they protect you from this shit, bro. And that's yep. what she she shielded me from a lot of things, bro. Yeah. And I I was forever grateful for. Her, so for shout sure. out to my grandma. Man, yeah, them grandmas, boy. Like I said, you you. If you hungry, they want to feed you. Man, boy. what? Like, you, <laughs> that's man. like that was a like job. They couldn't wait for you to come over just to ask you that question. Like, man, me and him, our, our, my, my, my great grandma, his grandma. Yeah. Man, you go over there, boy. You guaranteed a meal. For if she sure. ain't cooking, she for gotta sure. be sick. <laughs> yeah. She's sick or in the hospital, dog. Cause, <laughs> bro. And I, you have dinner ready at three o'clock. Like. That's how, like, bro. My uncle, used, my uncle used to get so jealous because, uh, <laughs> like, whenever I came back from overseas, man, I just go to grandma crib, oh, pull you up. up. Hey, you hungry? I'm like, yep. For sure, I'm hungry as hell, grandma. I'm like, yo. Hell she yeah. going there with a meal. This nigga will rip. Hell yeah. <laughs> nigga, she, every what, time this nigga comes, she cooking. Like, what's that? What's that? What's that dish you gonna you gonna miss, dog? She just put together, bro, dog. My my grandma from Pensacola, Florida, man. So like the one dish I'm gonna miss the most. <laughs> she used to make these black eyed peas and, yeah. and with the rice and the cabbage, For sure. cornbread, bro, and greens and shit like like that's. Bro, that's why I came up home, dog. So I'm gonna yeah. really miss that. Yeah. And uh, the damn sweet potato pie too. For she sure. always made sure we have some sweet potato pie. On Hell day. yeah, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my girl making the, muff the muffins and shit, dog. Oh she man, muff. Oh, dog, my man. grandma make things that shouldn't taste good taste good, bro. Like this, <laughs> yeah. shit, I don't like it, but when you make it, <laughs> this shit ain't one. You make it. <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. Even like the littlest thing, like chicken, like making sure it's hard when you make a chicken breast for it to be juicy. Niggas mm -hmm. overcook it, be too dry. Or, yeah. No, she had that boy. When you put the fork in it, it's still like some Spoon. juice. Nice, man. Tender, perfect. Shout out to the grandmas, yeah. man. If y'all ain't got one, I feel like a classic one. Man, like, that's, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I, was like, bro, I was spoiled. I had both sets of my grandparents, bro, because my yeah. parents had me when they was, uh, my dad was 17, mom was 18. So okay. They, I'm, I was a spoiled grandchild, for bro. Sure. But I was forever grateful for them. You know what I'm saying? Hell like, yeah, hell yeah, that's man. Unconditional love. No, for sure, for sure. Now I ask this, even though you don't do music, you might, you might have been a secret rapper, low key. Or you never know. Everybody yeah, a got. Bars yeah. like that, man. <laughs> but uh, I've been asking this question a lot, man. I'm always interested to, you know, hear somebody uh, answer. If you had to introduce yourself, J Youngblood, to the world without saying anything, but you got to use an album or a song, what would that be? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's a good ass question. I might start sending this shit out beforehand. Yeah. Like, hey, maybe on the spot, it'd be hard for people, dog. An album, bro. An album, bro. Yeah, it could um, be an album or a song, whichever one you feel it like suits you at. I really explain who you are without you saying anything. I, I would say, uh, damn, what's the name of Cole last album? Was it the the, um, the Fallout? No, no, no. Uh, damn, damn, you talking about the one he just had? Uh, 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 it's about basketball uh, though, uh, 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 or about sports, right? No, nah, like so the title. I forgot. I don't, I don't know why I'm going blank right now, bro. Because Cole, like one of my favorite artists, but you talking about uh, the off season? The off season, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the yeah, off yeah. season, I, I don't know why that it came to mind, bro. But it's just so many songs of like coming, like nigga, kind of falling down, but like coming back, like it's your comeback moment, like you, mm -hmm. you back outside, you know what I'm saying, like, and that's how I feel right now, like I'm back outside, like I'm back sure. active, dog, yeah. after being on that little drought, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and like the Most High kind of, the Most High put me on my ass, like yeah. let's be honest, like I was here, yeah. We, I mean, we know we're going to get into it, but... For sure. Yeah, I'll say the, I would say the off-season. Okay, okay. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one, dog. Yeah, I like asking that question, because I just be wondering, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 I always be curious, because, you know, everybody 
ba- I mean, basketball and sports is hand in hand. <laughs> yeah. So you know, what I'm saying for for the most part. <laughs> You can always relate to a song or an album and shit. Boy, boy, six years ago would have been a whole <laughs> different vibe, dog. That's what I said. Nigga, man. like, slipping and falling. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for real, hell yeah. Now, you kind of touched on it a little bit growing up. You say your, your mom and dad had you at a young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, what part of, you know what I'm saying, Detroit you from if if it's Detroit nah. and uh, who was in the crib with you? Yeah, man, so I grew up on, uh, we was on the west side of Detroit. Okay. We was on Grand River and Hubble. Okay. So that's what my mom, uh, my mom, she had me 18 and I grew up with my grandparents mm-hmm. for the first uh, seven years until that's when my parents got married. But okay. um, yeah, even my other set of grandparents, we uh, stayed with them for a little bit later on down in life, but it was on the west side, Puritan okay. and Greenfield, for Prevost. Sure. But yeah, no, nah, it was a great upbringing, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, love the community, love the people over there, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's where we was at. You had siblings? Yeah, I got one, one brother, bro. One okay. brother, man, named G. Mm-hmm. Um, ten years younger than me. Okay. Yeah. So I was the, I was the only child for a while. Was bro. you a little hurt like damn? Like <laughs> yeah, bro. Like I was like this shit boring as hell. Like yeah. because I had a whole bunch of cousins. So whenever sure. I was around, I mean I had a I got a lot. Shout out to all my cousins, like okay. Cali, Detroit. We used to do big family reunions. You know sure. what I'm saying? So like when well, when that was the vibe, it was just something like this yeah. experience, bro. Was everything. So hell yeah. When it was like time to go home, I'm like, bro, yeah, you, fuck, ain't nobody around. Dolo, this like, man. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. asked my mom for a brother, I don't, or for a child. I'm like, I need a sibling, man, because this shit. Yeah. So just, man, I had my little brother, bro, ten years later. So for that's, sure, yeah, for that's sure. the bro right there. And you was like, you was already in house babysitter, and everything. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. That's <laughs> and me ten, and him, bro. Yeah. What? For sure. Hell yeah. We be right back. I'm like, all right, man, me and him just chilling, bro. Hell yeah. All right, no, I got a brother seven years younger. Like, damn. Yeah. I'm right there, dog, holding this fool, man. Man, damn. for sure. <laughs> now, uh, basketball, man. That's the that's. that's that's your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who was the first person that, that brought basketball to your attention? That, that's the reason why you love the game today. Um, Man, probably my pops. I ain't going to hold you. I, like, now, my cousins, Lamar and Laquan, man, them two was the ones that I probably played basketball with mm-hmm. or watched, watched them play basketball outside the most. And, like, man, watching them, bad boys. But my pops, he mm-hmm. hooped. Like, my pops had a game. He was, he was a shooter. So, For sure. like, I know that DNA just trickled down to me, bro. And at that time, bro, you know, when we was coming up, the bad boys was kind of like, yeah, man, that shit was everything and sure. more, bro. You remember when they was selling the T-shirts with the cartoon? Yeah, yeah, with bro, the like, hammer, bro, the hammer time. On, hammer time, I had dog. That, yeah. had all the pistols with the cartoon, bro. Like, it sure. was a whole vibe. Classic. Like, I remember that shit like yesterday. So that's that's why I love the game the way I do, man. And mm-hmm. My pops, I say my pops was probably the most influential yeah. coming up. Now, you know, we, of course, like, you got kids, I got kids. You know what I'm saying? You was once a kid. Like, they put the ball in your hand. Mm-hmm. And they, 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 you know what I'm saying? For the most part, they probably want you to like it. You feel me? Yeah. But at what age did you, like, really become interested in basketball and really had those hoop dreams? Like, nigga, I love this shit. Man, I think it was, like, 95. I remember this shit, like, yesterday. Yeah. Like, um, just starting to watch NBA on TNT. Mm-hmm. Remember? The intro like yesterday, yep, yep, yep. Gary Penn, Gary Payton throwing that shit to Sean Kemp, yeah, hanging yeah, hang yeah, on sure. the rim like Fast. that shit inspired me to get them kamikazes back mm-hmm. in '95. Mm-hmm. Like them first Sean Kemp that came yeah. out, like that boys hard. So like '95 was when I, I think I started playing organized basketball. SYB, mm-hmm. man, shout out to people who ran that. Okay, so that's uh, I would say like '95. Yeah, really. yeah, because I like, man, kids, you want like because I'm learning. I don't want to pressure my kids to do to do it, but you kind of like you be happy like please, I hope they do it. Yeah, you know bro, I'm like you, my for sure. Like I, I mean for me. <laughs> so I I ain't want to push my son like I don't I ain't push my like cause I'm like dog that would be the worst thing for me to just be like that's why my daughter don't like basketball because <laughs> when she was three and four I'm like all right time to go outside and shoot free throws let's yeah, go like sure, yeah. nah she she hates the fucking game she don't like this shit at all I remember we was at family you they like oh your daddy play hey shoot a shot she's like no Hell yeah, I'm like, like I'm like oh fuck her up. Like, yeah, it's like, a rap she's you like, made me hate the game all. she like, hate that shit so Hell she, yeah. But uh, but my son, like, so when I'm training, bro, he's, like, he with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He in the background. He might be on a little rim shooting around. But mm-hmm. so, like, time just is passing so fast, bro. But he's been doing this the last two years. So, For like, sure. now he in the workouts. Now he going through the workouts with the older kids. Yeah. And, and he want to hoop. So, I'm like, I'm taking this. Like, I ain't trying to press it, bro, but yeah. he started to press me. So, yeah, it's like, if sure. he keep pressing me, I'm going to be like, all right, yeah, I yeah. got to back down and just let you hoop. You know for what I'm sure. saying? How, how old is young dog? My son, he just turned seven, man. Carter, oh, yeah. shout out to Carter, oh, man. Oh, yeah, 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 My son, man, he be, I can tell he, he kind of the same way because we be coaching with my cousin. He's mm-hmm. six. He be seven in July. Okay. And, like, I can already know. I see a little bit, like, people don't understand this. You got to be like a basketball head, but, like, the way he, he bounce when he dribble. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes you got to teach that to an older kid. He got he already got the rhythm a little bit. Man, that, dog, what you just said, man, it's still kids that don't understand that. The yeah. rhythm, just a dribbling with a <laughs> rhythm, sure. dog. Like, yeah. 
And if he doing that at this age, like you, you like man, that's that's something. Because I was helping my cousin, it was just one kid. I'm like, bro, loosen up, like yeah. he loosen up. And with my son, he just like this, like bounce. I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, hold on, that's a good sound yeah, right there. He about to be moving with, at his own pace, you know what I'm saying? For like, sure. With a nice bounce to his stuff, yep, you know what yep. I'm saying? Now, when did the game become easy for you, dog? And you like, like, and, and like it became easy. And you felt like the the NBA goal can be obtained. So. I was a late bloomer, bro. Like when I was in high school, uh, I played for Ben Kelso. Okay. And, and I shout out to Ben, uh, Coach Kelso, man. He's mm -hmm. like, uh, he was strict. He had a strict offense. Yeah. And but he showed you the fundamentals, and I felt like them fundamentals like w were able to be displayed and used at any level of basketball. Mm -hmm. Like, so I was kind of like I wasn't shooting for real. I wasn't a shooter. I was just a slasher. Okay. So when I I would say my freshman year of college, at, uh, I went to JUCO, my community college sure. up in Flint. Yep. That's when the game started. Like, I started feeling my presence consistently. Like, okay, hey, bro, you run this flow, you get a layup. You know what I'm saying? You don't get a layup. Hey, you crash the glass, you get more time. Mm -hmm. you, hey, you, you play defense and block shots, you get more time. It was start. I'm starting to realize, okay, yeah. how do you stay on the court? Now I'm staying on the court, and it's like, I'm I'm efficient on the court. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first got to college, bro, my coach... Man, we, I know we're going to get into it, but that's when it really kind of like, I was like, yo, okay, mm. dog, you keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You're going to have an opportunity to crack that motherfucker, bro. For sure, yeah. Because when the summer, summertime came around, we was in Flint. So, at that time, bro, we were talking about uh, Kelvin Tober, mm. um, Corey Santee, like all these dudes playing at a high level D1 coming back to Flint, yeah. and they coming to Mott to hoop. Cool. Yeah, and when I'm sure. hooping, I'm like... I'm I'm out here balling, yeah, bro. Saying, I'm just yeah, like, damn. They, and they and they they saying my name a little bit, like, yo, blood, yo, he's straight, bro. Yeah, like, for sure. I ain't gonna front, bro. That, I wasn't getting that love down here. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting that love, but, but I wasn't that same player though. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? You kind of changed Confidence, up, yeah. confidence grew over time. For sure, for sure. And then that's when. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out. I think uh, my dog might have came to my at the after you. Cause I think you you graduated with oh three. I graduated oh four from my. Oh okay okay so my boy uh B T Terrence Watson. T Mac, yeah, that's man, my dog, man. Yeah, he went to, uh, yeah, that's my dog. We uh, grew up in the same hood. Oh, T Mac, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, yeah. My, that's my dog. Him and um, I think what's name might went there too. Uh, no, I think he went straight to um Detroit Mercy. Uh, Ulysses, Ulysses uh, St uh, Stevens, whatever. He went to Southeastern. Okay. Then you had uh Willie Muskin, light skin dude, could shoot that boy. I, I think I, he heard, I remember Willie Muskin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my, what was the thing? I, I want to go back to high school, but what was okay. the thing about like my? You already kind of know if you go to my, you kind of like going to the next level afterwards. Like you, with JUCO and stuff, I yeah. think like Martin, like school craft college, yeah. like the yeah. two schools to go to. Like if you want to pursue a four year, degree, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. somewhere else. Like what is it about th those two schools that like so, Hoopers go there? So I, like at that time it was it was my school craft. Like now, I mean school craft and my they both kind of because my just went to the uh, national tournament. But mm -hmm. Henry Ford, shout out Henry Ford and McComb just to put the JUCO uh, scene on the map a little sure. bit. They they went down there as well. But back then, bro, it was like. Coach Schmidt, he was getting everybody to the D one level, bro. Yeah. Like when he when he started recruiting me, bro, and he sent them papers, like he sending me papers with all these cats, bro, that then went to the school and they transferred D one. I'm yeah. just like, damn, Clemson, Michigan State, mm -hmm. uh, Oklahoma State. I'm like, this might be the move. For and sure. they winning, like they went to the uh, national tournament back yeah. to back. So it's like Consistently winning, you go yeah. to the national tournament, bro. Like it's all it's a lot of college coaches down there. So it's like I felt like that was the best spot for exposure. Mm -hmm. And schoolcraft was as well. Like them was they was like the top of the food chain. For sure, right yeah, there, bro. hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I thought I was gonna play for Macomb, man, but then a I word. had a baby a month later. Like, yep, it's a wrap. Damn, <laughs> I was gonna try out, just, dog. I went to yeah, Macomb shit. for a hot three months, dog. Yeah, Macomb has some straight hoopers on their squad. Yeah, yeah cause my boy, my young dog played for uh, Mont too. He wound up going to um, Creighton. Uh, Malik Albert. But, okay. Yeah, okay. Malik. Yeah, he had went to King. He went there. He was doing his thing. That little boy had some man. He had some bounce, bro. Boy. Listen, man, I tell people all the time, like Coach Schmidt. I don't care what nobody say, bro. Like he. Is connected. Mm -hmm. He know a lot of people, bro. Uh, he he know put a you in lot a of people put you in a good situation. Like, man, I'm talking about, we came in nine freshmen deep. Mm -hmm. Nine freshmen. It was only two sophomores in the rotation. And dog, we won a national championship our freshman year. Yeah, kill Won a national championship. So, but it was like, Schmidt let us hoop, though. Yeah. He like, all I need y'all to do is play hard and play defense. Mm -hmm. Offensive end, you know what I'm saying? He just let us play. For and sure. I think that's what helped us with our confidence, hell bro. Yeah. We was confident as hell. Hell yeah. Shout out, dog. Yeah. Shout mm -hmm. out to Mott, dog. He, mm -hmm. They definitely be producing some motherfucking talent over yeah, there, dog. Nah, for, for sure. real, for real. Now, like, as in middle school, high school, I know you say you, your game developed a little bit more once you got to Mott. But what was the thing you was you was doing, like, to try to get noticed? And, like, who were you playing with as far as AAU 
that you felt was gonna put you on the scene to be, you know what I'm saying, looked at? Bro, I never played AAU. Really? Yeah, I yeah. was, uh, man, because you know, when we was coming up, you more so had, like, you can go to a rec center, fuck around, play with a rec center, and <laughs> be playing sure. other rec centers. So, yep, like, yep. I spent a lot of time, bro, like, you know, in the city, I was going to Bustle a lot, I was yeah. going to Tindall a lot, and I would sure. just be playing and kind of measuring my game of how I was playing against them cats that was up there. Like, mm -hmm. uh, when I was at Tindall, bro, like, Mo Ager, that's one of my best friends, bro, sure. but shout out to Mo. We used to, though. We used to go up to Tindall. I'm talking about. We used to catch the bus from Southfield. Yeah. We used to catch the bus, go right. up to Northland, catch the bus, bro, <laughs> and go all the way up to Tindall. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Get it in up there, boom, catch the bus back to Southfield, mm -hmm. and then Bustle, Bustle, they had some good ass run over yep. there as well, yep. bro. Yep. So them was the two main wrecks that I was going to, and just I was just hooping in the city for sure. You know what I'm saying? But sure. uh, what I was working, I would say. My my main thing, like, I, I was thinking about this in the car because I feel like you were going to ask something similar <laughs> to this. So I was like, the summer of my junior year going to my senior year, bro, my, I, I couldn't drill. I couldn't, like, really. I ain't had no handle. Like, sure, my okay, handle okay. was kind of, like, suspect, bro. Yeah. So, man, so hold on. Let me see. I, and I cut you off. Would you like an equal dollar type of player? I most definitely was equal. Okay, okay. Type of nigga, no. I was talking? not shooting, bro. Yeah, like, sure. I was going straight to the cup every yeah. time. <laughs> like, so, I, I look, man, I, I'm talking about. I can show you a clip right now. If I was in high school, you'd be like, "Damn, nigga, like how you get there?" But, like, you know what I'm saying? How you how you do it? Like, you know what I'm saying? But it was just like dedicating and, and that belief and being confident. So like, my handle was suspect. Mm -hmm. Man, we got our ass whooped in the um, summer league championship game by uh, Country Day. Okay. Man, I ended up leaving. I went to Kentucky with my cousin for like three weeks, bro. Yeah. I'm down, I'm in Paducah, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Nigga, every morning outside on this basketball court. Nigga up with the birds, nigga just dribbling, yeah. dribbling against my shadow, like for sure, for sure. So I did that shit three weeks, bro. Yeah, came back when I'm hooping. <laughs> my homie came Stroud, I get in the gym, hit a nigga with a pop, pop. He was like, "Hey, you, uh, you been working on your handle, bro?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. he said it was 11th grade going to 12th grade. Yeah, it was going to 12th as our last year. You Man, know what I'm saying? So duh. like, that was it was like always, bro. Like, cause you know we ain't had no trainers back then, bro. So yeah, it was kind of sure. like at all. We was just kind of going off myths. Hey, I heard if you do this, this will help you yep, yep. do them toe raises. And then you heard you be able to dunk for sure. yeah, four was, weeks. You know, get what them spud like, web shoes. Yeah, <laughs> them big ass stretch shoes. Hell yeah. <laughs> for sure. Damn, niggas in that boy trying to get some bounce, dog. That was one, and nah, I, and you know what? That was one of the main things we all was trying to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like the, we, niggas was trying to dunk. So we was like, man, man toe up, squats, all that. And you said something like. You go, working on your handles. I feel it's two things that's going to keep you on the court. Handles and defense. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because if you can take the pressure from a zone or a press or whatever it is, like I heard y'all say how Cavs like, consistently run a, a full court press. Mm -hmm. Some teams and some coaches see that shit and they hear already like, dog, we, we lost. Because yeah. some kids can't handle the pressure of a, of, a, of a full court press. Yeah. So just having handles and being able to play defense, I feel those two qualities that you – if you got those, you'll stay on the court. Bro, I feel like, yeah, defense for sure, like, top. Mm -hmm. I think that's, like, one of the top priorities to, like, find a way on the court. Like, yeah. making it difficult. Because coaches love that. I say defense and I think rebounding. Okay, like, yeah, Rebounding sure. always. Like, that's how I stay on. I used to love offensive rebounds. Cause, and coaches love it because you're creating another possession. Yeah, you know what sure. I'm saying? Yep, so, yep, it's yep. like... Once you see, they see you constantly creating possessions. They start letting you put, do shit with more sure. freedom. Like yep. you earned a, you earned a wild ass yeah, three yeah. now. Like you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Sure. Yep. Wild three yep. now. You yep. know what I'm saying? We gonna you out there, but just keep Duh. working. You know what I'm saying? I told my son there's just one kid on his team because my son going to 11, the kid going to 12. I said, listen, the only thing he got over all y'all is hustle because he come in the game and throw some crazy shit, boy. Bro. But he gonna. If he miss a layup, I guarantee you he's sprinting back down on defense. He's gonna get it right back. Bro, that that right there, you, that's like you can't you can't teach but no, that. Like, so, but whenever we are working out, like that's one of the things. Like, bro, we gotta create the culture. You know no, what I'm saying? Sure. We gotta for create sure. the culture. So like, if we in here, nigga, let's be in here and, and keep this shit high level, high energy. Mm -hmm. Let's not waste the time like coasting and trying to look good. Exactly. It's like, dog, this time. Exactly. It's of the essence, bro. We gotta yeah. make this shit work. And you say rebounding. One thing I don't see when I watch games. Do do people know how to box out? I don't. I, I don't listen, bro. We spend <laughs> at least twenty to thirty minutes in practice working on boxing out. Yeah. We still like, bro. We had we was hooping yesterday. Yeah. Against you know one of the schools, just having a little friendly scrimmage. Okay. This kid was killing us on the offensive glass. Bro. I said, dog, what? <laughs> what do we gotta do? Y'all got For this sure. boy looking like Dennis Rodman, man, dog. dog. That's but one thing I will be looking like, dog. Ain't nobody boxing out at all, like at yeah, all, man, bro. But, and that's what I'm saying, like the basics. I be one. I, I need. I want my kids to know the basic fundamentals, bro. Just like because that 
get you time on the court. No, facts. Your coach see you, man, seal a nigga, box yeah, him out, let yeah. that ball drop, and like you, you said, get it. you like, had that freedom to throw up that crazy three. Exactly, that, bro. That, that dame three from half, yeah, you feel me? Because he but, know, I can't say too much because I know he going to get back on D. Yeah, but you know, like, sometimes... It, if if you out there you looking timid, bro, you know you on a short leash. For sure. You on a you on a short leash, bro. No, for you sure. trying to look good instead of trying sure. to make some shit happen. Hell yeah. Now you, I know you said you didn't play AAU, but AAU now. Like it's like AAU is more important than high school ball. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Like, talk about AAU now. Do you feel like of course it's helping, but do you feel like a lot of organizations and a lot of coaches kinda hurt the game because it seems like it's more about them and not about the kid? Um, I think I think it's real important, like the levels. You know, you know what I'm saying. As you, because I mean, of course, EYBL. Mm -hmm. You know, the other the other circuits that's you know sponsored by like, uh, you know, Nikes and Adidas and all of that Under yeah, Armour. For sure. Like I think you playing with the best of the best. Now you you start lowering, <coughs> getting a little lower level. Mm -hmm. You just start seeing like some wild shit at times. <laughs> like, sure, like yeah. dog, what he's <laughs> like, and I know I'm hard on my kids, bro, but. It's some shit, bro, that just kind of like, you got to remember, we coaching kids and you don't want to kill the confidence. And I'm not mm. saying it don't be hard on players, you know what I'm saying? Because I do, I think it creates a type of grit mm. that you need in the game. But you got to remember, they're kids and they still growing up, you For know sure. what I'm saying? So there ain't nobody perfect. Yeah. And then also, you got to remember, bro, these parents, you got to know who know the game. Mm -hmm. So it's on you to make sure that you get your, your player, your kid with somebody that knows it and not somebody that's just talking. Mm. Bro, you could fucking chat GPT some shit now <laughs> yeah, and make, sure. make you sound, sound like a coach, but yeah, nigga, sure. that don't mean that you know the game. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly, man. Cause like you run to, cause um, I coach my cousin. Shout out to my cousin Brittany Dorsey. Uh, oh, Britt, that's yeah, that's the homie. Yeah, know, that's, 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 my, that's my that's my wife. Um, that's, that's her cousin. Oh, okay. That's so what's yeah, up. so uh, I be helping her with her uh, organization, okay. uh, ITK. Yeah, and shit like that. Like, what is your advice to somebody who like got a program that's on the up and coming on the rise, but the talent just ain't. Where is where the other where it should be? True. You feel me? Because you you looking for talent, like do you feel like they should just spend more time in those those those, those smaller little tournaments and less traveling, more so conquering the city and shit like that? I mean, you kind of gotta. It all depends on what your approach is. Like, so for me, I want to throw. I threw them in the fire. I threw my team in the fire a couple times mm -hmm. just to see how they was gonna respond. Mm -hmm. See how see if if they brought the mentality to uh, come with a different approach to next practice. For sure, and it works sometimes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. We we got our ass whooped in Ohio maybe like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we came back like they hungry. Yeah, you know for what sure. Yeah, it's yeah, like yo, they now y'all yeah. see what happened. You for know sure. what I'm saying? Like y'all see what the competition is. So it's it, it's it's a thin line, bro. I think that you do have to, um, you know, throw them in the fire at times, give them some competition, but you mm. also got to give them the, uh, what my homie Nick say. You got to let them get get at the Don Flamingos. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? For like sure. the easy, like you might. They might not be the best, but you know, yeah. it's good for the confidence. For All sure. right, so for now sure. we got a little bit more confidence. Let's go back in the fire and see what we do now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And yeah. Maybe you didn't lose by no. twenty. You yeah. lost by for sure. nine and, and ten. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? Experience the best teacher, bro. So we, like, we had one game that was about like forty. Like, damn. Come on, man. Right, it, it's like when you coaching those games, it'd be hard to like, damn, this game, this clock, dog. man, speed that clock up. <laughs> All right, so now you're talking about it. I got a vent. Nah, I got a vent, dog. So <laughs> our last game at Crystal Ray. And oh, this is my first time talking about this shit, man. <laughs> Go ahead. It looked like you frustrated. Oh, <laughs> oh, this shit hurt my soul, man. I, we 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 playing uh, Depsa, man. Okay. Right. And I I, I scouted Depsa, dog. I, in my head, I'm mm. like, bro, you bought the motherfucking dog. You bought to coach this shit up, <laughs> yeah, fuck. Like y'all ain't gonna win, yeah. but nigga, y'all gonna play hard. Y'all gonna fucking come close to winning, bro. Yeah. Right? So that's how I'm thinking in my head. You For know sure. what I'm saying? I'm looking at film and shit, scouting. I'm like, okay, yeah. See, this is gonna work on him. Yep. Man, we got in there, man. My players, they were scared, bro. They was, <laughs> yeah. like, nervous, bro. And man. then my best player ain't show up. Oh, dog. Mama told me he couldn't come. Man. Man, we got our ass. I'm talking about Joe Jackson ass. Like, <laughs> we lost 84, 81 to 14. Damn. So, Pete, like. Yeah, that's so a, for that's me, a, that's a beat this is the worst loss of my life. Like, yeah. I so, ain't never lost again. Yeah. So, in, in my head, dog, I'm trying to, like, I'm thinking of every. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to breathe. I'm like, yo, bro, just breathe, bro, because you' about to explode. Like, yeah. hey, meditate just for a second, just for the sure. third quarter in, bro. Like, just I'm trying everything to stay cool, bro. Yeah. But then I got that locker room. I let loose, bro. I'm like, bro, this, this, nah, yeah, this ain't <clears> it. This ain't it, bro. Yeah, so, man. but I took that shit personal, man. And, and it's like it was a teacher. It's like, for okay, sure. so for sure, what you gonna change now? Doing that, doing that beat down, like afterwards, like. I know it probably was a couple nights you didn't go to sleep because you was thinking about what? everything. Man, I, dog, I was up till fucking two o'clock. I was no. up, dog. Like, dog, I'm looking like, man, his ass ain't coming back next year. Yeah, like, dog. But I'm just like, bro, you know what? Listen, 
these your guys, bro. For sure, for sure. And you know what, man? I ain't gonna front. And watching them play like in the summertime, at, like with open run or something. Yeah. I could tell, dog, that that season has helped them. You for know sure. What I'm saying? So yeah. it was just like, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. it was just an ass whooping we had to take. You bro. need that sometimes. You bro. need it, bro. You, know, you need it. So. Man, and like I say, man, because I ain't been like I said, I coach middle school for right now mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and I be helping with the high school. Uh, with her, where you know, hey, you and stuff, but with the middle school, you be like, sometimes you just gotta take the whooping like that. Yeah, this hit hard. But bro. but my advice <laughs> though is to stick, stick, bro. Listen, man, you gotta stick. I I say keep coaching them, keep sure. coaching them, bro, mm-hmm. because you'll never know, like who who it'll click for him at a certain time. No, for you sure. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, like man. yesterday, bro, I was training the kid, bro. I had to get on him because he didn't his his his. his his frequency wasn't where the other players was, bro. He was kind of coasting, mm-hmm. and it was, it showed. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, bro, I challenged him. I'm like, yo, what you going to do, man? They going at you right now. Yeah. What are you going to do? They going exactly. at you. For sure. He started crying and whatnot. Yeah, but see, a lot of kids don't. I know with me, bro, it, ah, I, got, I got issue, though, with, with life. Like, I think with everything, I take everything as a challenge, bro. Yeah. Like, like I tell the kids, if you see somebody in practice or you see somebody on your team, that is the, is that person? Yeah. I'm going at him every day, and that's what I was telling every him. single I'm, I'm day, like, dog. Listen, bro, you you right now you gotta make your presence felt, and I, I chewed him out, bro, but it woke him up for sure. Like it woke him up, so yeah. not we playing the ones. He he coming at dog. He coming. Got he, to. I mean, I'm just like, bro, this is what's expected, bro. We yeah. gotta stop getting mad and then deciding to play. I, exactly. I did that a lot in high school, bro. Like, yeah, and come I think, off the rip. I think sometimes things come back at you full circle. You yep. know what I'm saying? Because that was me mm-hmm. when I was a youngin. Like, yo, getting mad about shit because it ain't going my way. So I'm just kind of like Man. zoning out or making yeah. an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But exactly. nah, bro. Quit, uh, short memory, bro. Fix the shit, bro. Oh, you yeah. gotta make Definitely got to make adjustments, Definitely got short memory, man. Because, yeah. like, this year I was coaching a shout out to Warren Academy, the girls team. I went there because my dog... Uh, athletic director, he's like, man, come over here. Mm-hmm. I look like, bro, I call him like, dog, we probably going to win one game. Maybe, because <laughs> I, I, it wasn't not one girl on the team that had any guard skills. But yeah. it was one girl I noticed that was like, she can dribble that boy up and down the court, and she hustled. Yeah. So my focus is on her. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right. So I'm like, listen, we they don't know offense, so our whole focus is going to be defense. Yeah. And most of the time, when you play middle school girls, they probably have one or two girls that can mm-hmm. play. So like, if I notice it's a, it's a, <laughs> it was one team, bro, the dad wanted to fight. The referee. Oh, That's our bad guy. Man. Because I noticed um, it was uh, one girl. It was only one girl. So I'm like, fuck, we about to do a triangle and two. Damn. <laughs> I get the triangle and two. <laughs> bro, didn't score again. Beat them down, bro. One wound up winning by like 15. Damn. And then my man was like, they beat my daughter ass. He like, if, if, I, if she get fired one more time. Next thing you know, she got, I guess he felt she got fouled. He went and got in the referee face in the middle of the game, bro. Man, hey, dog. I, I, listen, when it comes to ref, bro, I'm not even, I can't even judge nobody, bro. I got, boy, I got, man, I got a couple texts this year, bro. <laughs> I got kicked out of the game. Duh. I got suspended two games. Or I, like, it was a, it, like, this was a learning experience, bro. Yeah. But I'm competitive, fam. Like, sure. I'm hella competitive. And it's just like, some with, referees don't know what the hell they doing, bro. And that's the thing, bro. <laughs> but it's at the same time, it's like I gotta be the example, fam. Mm-hmm. Like, cause, cause if that my I seen like you know my players see me tripping at the ref, but it's like I'm, I'm really getting on them for them to get y'all something, but not for y'all to get on them. You know for what I'm sure. saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they gonna follow suit. You know what I'm saying? So like this, sure. that first year, bro. This was like a real oh, like yeah. learning experience, yeah, bro. For sure but it was. I. I'm forever grateful for that group, bro, because they was like they they might not have been the most talented group, dog, but mm-hmm. I do believe that all of them like really tried to buy into what it was I was teaching them, dog. For sure, yep. And uh, that's why I said that they always got like a special place in my heart, bro. Like they they can always come to me and like mm-hmm. tap in, bro. Like they I'm forever grateful for. Oh yeah, now dog, you um, of course y'all do y'all do the podcast, y'all focus a lot on high school basketball and stuff. Mm-hmm. One thing I have noticed, dog, in comparison to when I I graduated 2004. It was a lot of dogs in the PSL. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You had your South Easterns, you had your your Finneys, you know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. had a Murray Wright. You had a lot of dogs within the PSL. Now it seems like a lot of kids are playing out of the out of Detroit. It's mm-hmm. a lot of kids that's going to the Southfield Christians, it's a lot of West Bloomfields and what what is the reason why so many kids is, is so much talent outside of Detroit? Because right now in Detroit we only think about Casman kicking ass and King usually have a good squad. But I think it's talent in Detroit. I just think the talent lead the city. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And go to the Catholic leagues. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like the Brother Rices. The I mean, a lot of those kids is not from out that way. They yeah, from sure. the city. Yeah. And I just think that um, the Catholic league has gotten so competitive that it's attracting a lot of more people to you know what I'm saying to those schools. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know, man. I'll be feeling like sometimes I feel like that that PSL is gonna come back somehow, some way. For sure. Because 
it's opportunity, man. Like, it's, it's so many people trying to play this game. But I think once the kids realize that, yo, it's these PSL schools, like, and, and the coaches, it's an opportunity for you to, you know what I'm saying, have a chance to get a profit. For sure, you're for trying sure. To, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to go somewhere in the game. Mm -hmm. But I think our kids, they got to, it's just it's about the approach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. A lot of these AU coaches, they coaching out there. In those mm -hmm. in those Catholic uh, leagues, so they leaving to go with their coaches and mm -hmm. shit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I think like before this year, you had a cup with with Cass, but I think before that, it was a gap. I think like the last probably good PSL team, great PSL team was probably a K Fielder team with Persian. Mm. Yeah, bro. Like and, and like that's why I like I like Chaz going to King. I like Chaz leaving yeah. the Catholic Central. You know what I'm saying? I think his pops had moved back out to the city and ended okay. up going to King. But I like that move because it's like you do want to see the PSL. Yeah. Um, at a certain level, but at the same time, it's like you know what everything things evolve. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it's just a wave right now that like the Catholic League and yeah. some of the schools out in the burbs, you know, what I'm saying it's is getting majority yeah. of the players right yeah, now. Yeah, because it was it was different cause back then. Cause uh, you didn't you initially go to Crockett. I was supposed to go to Crockett, bro. Yeah, damn. You how went, you know that? <laughs> I just you know a little research. Yeah, hey, yeah. man, damn. <laughs> I was supposed to go with the Crockett, man. Hey, that was a hell of a summer, dog. Damn, boy. Hey, you know that's some shit. Man, we, hey, dog, we, I swear, ninth grade, we was like, me, Mo Ager, my boy Phil Jones, we was ready to get the fuck. Because Kelso, one, they was on JV. I was on freshman. Yeah. I was just like, bro, I don't know. And Murph, dog, shout out to Rob Murphy, man. Rob, yeah. Murph, Murph was like coming to scoop us up, taking us up to Tyndall. Yeah. He telling us we're going to be able to play varsity, bro. I'm like shit, yeah. nigga. We all trying to play varsity, like for we sure. out, we out, nigga. So, yeah. but nobody was more like for real about that shit than Mo Ager. Yeah. So when I was went to my pops, to, you know, what I'm saying I'm trying to get the paper signed to so go to Crockett. Yeah, because wasn't was there too at like, Mohead? Yeah, Mohead. Yeah, was yeah, there. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mo, yeah. Mohead, yeah. shit. Uh, who else? Okay, he said he'll coach my uh, my brother AU team and stuff. Mo was tough, dog. Mo was a real good point guard, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, my pops wouldn't sign the papers. He wanted me to stay with Kelso, so that's why I couldn't go to Crockett, man. Oh yeah, so you in Southfield. So I had to stay at Southfield. <laughs> now, did you feel like then? Cause like did, back then, I felt like if you didn't go to the PSL, you like oh he ain't no dog because he didn't play. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because back then you I had hated that shit, B Jennings, dog. you had Big Walk, Puna. I, I really and Puna, Puna, I love, hey, man. That Listen, was, bro, it, I got I gotta say something about Puna, bro. Like Puna, Puna reffing right now. Like yep. he reffing right now, right? I just want the players to understand who the who the ref is, bro. Yeah, like for sure. you gotta know who Ray Metcalf is. If you don't know, like if you a kid and you playing at you and you see Ray Metcalf refing, yeah. you need to hit him and just let I me mean, talk to just get some advice from him. You know what I'm saying? Because dog. like, bro, I don't even know if Ray remember this when I was in high school. We was up at Tendo. We used to be playing up at Tendo. Mm -hmm. Man, Ray gave me some little tips on just how to like, hey, hey, dog, this is what you need to do on defense here and there, like. Mm -hmm. And the shit actually worked. Yeah, like I'm sure. just yeah, like, yo, yeah. this is some dog ass advice. Cause Ray was a dog ass defender. Dog, you know what I'm he saying? was him and oh, yeah, what's name right behind him, Jonathan Kelly. Oh, no. J.K. But yeah, yeah, like, yeah see, I'm my playing, class, bro. Yeah, yeah see, I'm playing against yeah. them. And uh, at, shit, at Ethan the Shaw game. and uh, Ethan Shaw and, and no. uh, you know one dude who was hard, bro. I seen him like uh, Crenshaw. Crenshaw, you know me and Crenshaw went to Kent State together. Dog, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I know that. I remember he gave my cousin buckets. <laughs> hey, dog. <laughs> we were playing against them. We had this league at the Y, Eastside YMCA, bro. I'm like, dog, who is this nigga? He was giving my cousin. The, and my cousin Tom was like the coaches. And the, like, our team was straight. My cousin was co point guard. I was like that dude, just, you know, slash a little dude, finishing a jump. But when I, he, we made our match against him, dog. Like, bro, I, got a, I got a quick Crenshaw story, bro. Like, man, we had, um, man, we played, we played Southern Illinois on ESPN when I was at Kent. Yeah. And, uh, Man, we ended up losing the Southern. We lose. We lost to them at the crib, bro. Yeah. Man, coach would walk us up the next morning. We had practice like 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. next day. But uh, we practicing, bro. Like, shit got real competitive. You know, everybody trying to prove a point, whatnot. Shit, For physical. Sure. physical. Man, Crean got hot as hell, dog. Crean got so hot. Yeah. <laughs> Man, shout out to the homie Michi Johnson, bro. His son played at uh, South Carolina. But Michi, he was, his dad was on the team. Yeah. He's like, I think baby AI has arrived. He's here. Yeah. He's here. Like, I've been no. talking cash shit. I'm talking about it's like real tense in there but yeah. you know what I'm saying somebody get to talking shit nigga get even mad, more mad yeah. Crean was a bucket bro no, like for sure. uh, certified for bucket for sure he's probably get my cousin about 30 nigga <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially like, at McKenzie bro Crean like, was yeah, a walking I'm bucket I'm like I ain't switching on that nigga yeah. like yeah fuck that and they got a handle, he could shoot him. when he got hot bro it was hard it was hard to stop him bro yeah that was all fast now uh you, you talk about what's name um 
Kent State. Mm -hmm. Was the reason going to Mott was it because of, was it because of grades? Like, because yeah, a lot, you know, yeah. a lot of times you know you go to Mott because you know the grades might not be all there, so I'm gonna go to JUCO. Then you know, saying transfer. Yeah, man, I dude, my grades was fucked up. I was trying to like, and it's just, bro. At that time, bro, it was just like, yo, let me just make sure I get this 2.0 so I can go ahead and hoop. For sure. That's it. Yeah, like, once I got think. that shit, like, I'm I'm chilling. Yeah. And. uh Man, that shit came back to bite me in the ass because it was like, even when I had some interest, bro, it was just like, oh, you can't even do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you not at the level where we we still give you a scholarship, you know what I'm saying? Put you on that, uh, what that shit was called at the time? Prep for, uh, Prop 42 or whatever. Mm -hmm. I forgot, it was something like that. And so I, I was just kind of like, bro, I damn I fucked up. But you know what I mean? Grades was most definitely the reason. Yeah. And But I think Juco... Juco did help with grades and it helped with games, so it was like I I actually needed that shit. You know For what sure. I'm saying? No, I most fast. definitely needed that. Yeah, because without that, you probably wouldn't. Have, you know, saying involved, like you said, you stepped your game up a little bit more once you got to uh, my. Oh yeah, no, nah, it was go time, bro. Yeah. I now, mean, now I know you said you won a uh, what you won a championship your first year. Yeah. Second year you was like what, MVP or something or like. Yeah. So. Uh, a player of the year or something. Player of the year. Of the year. So year. I won. I won national. We we won a national championship my freshman year. Mm. We went back to the national championship. My sophomore year, and we lost in that joint. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did get the national player of the year. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, man. That was like it felt like it was, like it was surgery. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For sure. It was surgery after like that wound from losing in the national championship. But it was like you got the recognition for being yeah. like the best player yeah, in the, whole in the shit. nation. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I never forget. I got that shit when I was in my like coach brought it to the gym and we hooping. I'm talking about all the D1 cats back. Man, this big ass plaque. Yeah. I'm just like, damn, dog. Like, this <laughs> shit, bro. We really, we we really, that shit paid off. All no. that work, bro, that shit paid off. For sure. Now, you, now going to Kent State, was there any other school leading up that you was thinking about going to and not, and not uh, Kent? Yeah, man. I was like, really, I liked Oakland. Mm -hmm. I liked Oakland a lot, man, because yeah. they had uh, the, big, the homie Ish, Ish, mm -hmm. Demarcus Ishmael. That's my homie. He was at Mott, oh, yeah, and he, he ended up home. going to Oakland. Uh, they had Raw Marshall, who's like somebody. Oh, yeah, I, I remember him, boy. That I fuck with Raw. Raw yeah, the homie, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I remember saying? when they went to the... Uh, the the yep, yep, yep. So I like see if I, if I would have win, I would have been on that team. Oh shit! You know what yeah, I'm saying yeah. like, but Mike Hills was a, I, I, you know, I used to watch him a lot while he was out there. He was like top five scorer in the nation, bro. And I just seen he had like a lot of success. Mm. I remember we used to go out there and hoop what not, and whatnot. His pops used to like show love. Mm. That gave a nigga confidence. So I liked Oakland a lot. For sure. But um, man, after I won that national player of the year, man, a lot a lot of schools, man, they came in late, like. Mm. And it was like Some shit I really wasn't I mean I was expecting it Cause yeah. I was getting letters yeah. But they was like Hitting the line I'm yeah, talking head crazy. coaches Like yo Like I on my flight to Kent State mm. uh, Billy Gillespie called me From Texas A&M Like hey uh, Young blood Need you down here Like yeah. I'm like shit like, <laughs> Texas A&M dog Like, yeah, okay. like bro This is SEC You know yeah, what I'm saying So yeah. But uh, I mean Big 12 Big 12 I think at that time So I don't know man But Kent State Murph was at Kent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I would tell you some wild shit that happened with that too. Yeah. So Murph was at Kent and it was just like I felt like I I could trust Murph. You for know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Anything go down, I know I can go to Murph and like Murph would get me right and Murph would keep it a hundred with me, like what I need to be doing in order to play. Mm -hmm. So uh my boy Dre Haynes was there too. Dre Haynes went to the Southwestern. Mm -hmm. He was at the school as well. So I just like the the culture there, bro. Yeah, yeah, Oakland yeah. University, Wright State, and I think Wisconsin, Green Bay, those are all the schools that I visited. But by the, after I won that award, bro, we, I had USC calling late. I had yeah. St. John's in. But all them schools, like, on some probation type shit. So I was yeah. just like, hey, fuck that. Well, I, yeah. I, I need to hoop. I'm trying to get to the NCAA yeah. tournament. You Hell know what yeah. I'm saying? Hell yeah. Now, you know what I'm saying? Of course, we just got fans talking about earlier. He played 13 years overseas. Mm -hmm. But coming out of Kent State, like, was that NBA pitch like shit? It could happen. Oh, that bitch was good. I know you said you played summer league for yeah. Dallas. Yeah, I played NBA summer league with Dallas. Yeah. The the thing with me, bro, is like I, I think I for sure would have benefited from a trainer to mm -hmm. teach me. So like that's what like, and we don't get into this, but this is why I shout out my homie Marcus Stout so okay. much because when I got with him when I was overseas, mm -hmm. I started adding these counters and shit and just like kind of building my game instead of just being that wing but mm -hmm. more of a combo guard yeah for sure you know what i'm saying and that shit if i feel like i would have got to that a little bit earlier mm -hmm. that i probably would have had a better shot because like it was games bro where i had success bro like in that summer league you talking yeah. about we playing against jordan farmer and andrew bynum yeah uh, we playing against andre blatch rudy yep. gay kyle Lowry, yeah, all this Hell like yeah. and i was like you know those games i struggled and shit because it was like you know nigga they had me playing point guard bro i'm like yeah. <laughs> i'm talking about <laughs> 
nigga, I was no way near a point guard at that time. <laughs> yeah. I only I was thinking about getting buckets from the wing. You For know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I when I played on that summer league shit, bro, and, and you know had a couple good games, bro. Like mm -hmm. last game against the Wizards, I ain't missed a shot. I had 19. Yeah, I was like, balling. I'm like, yo, nigga, I'm like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm like that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. The game is like it's. So much of that shit is predicated towards confidence, bro. Like you, nah. know, you gotta be confident in who you, you are, got to, bro. Yeah, if you don't, like, you ain't gonna show. unleash the shit that you got within you if you're not, you know, you ain't confident. And that's why, I, like, we was talking about, just kind of piggyback on using this, bro, and like training your brain, bro. You gotta do that to unleash all this shit that you got within you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fast. Hell yeah, fast, dog. Now, I, I want to jump into the pod, man. I know we gotta, you know, cut out soon. But before that, what's the one thing you took away playing overseas? That like, what's the experience? Like, what was the the lesson learned going and playing overseas for those thirteen years? My lesson was, uh, I say, broaden your horizon, bro. Mm -hmm. Broaden your horizon because it was a lot that I learned over there that that I didn't know as a youngin. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't gonna front, bro. Like I I, I can say this on here. Like one of the main things, you know, growing up in the church, mm -hmm. they kind of like put. Not everybody, but certain people put certain images on other religions or other cultures. You know For what I'm sure. saying? So, like, you know, especially like around the 9-11 shit, you know, everybody was portraying Muslims as a certain way. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But when I got over to Lebanon, bro, and then I was over there them eight years, mm. bro, it was all love. For I'm sure. talking about, like, when I needed shit, yeah. it was the Muslims, bro, like, that, that, that came in. Hey, we got you. I'm not saying the Christian brothers over there didn't help, because they did. They helped as well. But yeah. I'm talking about, like, them brothers, when they was consistently... Hitting me, making sure I was good. My my uh my homie, my boy C B, shout out to um rest in peace C B. He died in a car accident, bro. Mm -hmm. Then was them brothers when they found out, came, drove over there, made sure I was good, bro. Yeah. Like, blood, you don't need a drink, man. You good, brother. Like we we praying for you. Like for sure. it was yeah. love. So that's why I was like, I kinda brought my brought my horizons, learned more about you know what I'm saying? Shit out, outside of your culture and the for things sure, that you yeah. didn't know about. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up, man. Yeah, because I know it. It probably was like it had to be tough being away from home. You know what I'm saying? You know, way over there. But you you doing what you love, yeah, so that's yeah. that's the kind of takeaway that you get from being over there. But you're still so far away from the crib. Yeah, you you sacrifice a lot, bro. Like I, like one thing that you know, I'm, until this day, like I'm still trying to. Like I knew I was away from my daughter for a long time. I had my daughter in 06, okay. you know what I'm saying? But I've been I was gone the whole time. Only time I seen her was in the summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? She came to Austria one year to to visit or whatnot, but it was still a lot of time missing. I'm trying to I'm still getting that back right now, but sure. you know what I'm saying? It's it's all love. She understand that. And I just love where we at right now. But it was a lot of time lost. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, man. But, you know, you got to sacrifice, yeah, shout bro. out to my dog. He been playing on, for a minute overseas. Uh, TK, Thomas uh, Kennedy. Man, TK, that's the homie, bro. Yeah. Like, so, TK, like, I think we talked one time, and he was saying, like, I think TK trying to do 20 seasons. Like, Yeah, he been, ball, I, he been hoping, boy. Man, listen, dog. TK was in. So, we and him played in the same country. I was in Austria. I think it was my fourth year. TK, first year, was oh, in Austria. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really watched him. You know what I'm saying? Go to Japan and be an icon over yeah, there, bro. Yeah. Like, Shit, I, he even got his family down there with him. Like. That's what I'm saying, bro. I got mad respect for TK. I love the way that he um, went about his journey, bro, and how he carried himself. Him and T Mac, though. T Mac, yeah, same T -Mac, thing. Yeah, he was same in Portugal thing. I know for a little bit. T Mac was the man. Of Israel. Yeah, I think he had a. I think he had messed his knee up. That's why he kind of like stopped playing, right? Yeah, I know he had ACL injury. Yeah, I don't know. Like, but you know, like over there, man. That's why I respect anybody that's grinding, bro. Over there, because it's like it's a lot of politics involved in that shit that people don't talk about. But it's a lot mm -hmm. of politics at times that's involved in, mm -hmm. you know, you getting an opportunity and and being able to play your game and be able to showcase your game. You for know sure, what I'm no, fast, fast. Now, dog, I know with the podcast, y'all, y'all, y'all talk. A lot to youth, you know what I'm saying, high school kids and stuff. But talk to that kid that got, like, the hood, the family behind them, come to every game cheering, you know what I'm saying, because they just know, like, like for example, a, a, a cuff, like, you just know, oh, yeah, he going to the league. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. when they just know that and they own you and they ride you and they just with you because they feel like this is going to be the person that's going to make it. Like, how should that person even look into that, go into that situation knowing that, Everybody is on him because they think he's gonna be the one who gonna make it to the league and gonna feed the feed they, the, the hood the family like because it gotta be pressure on you knowing yeah. you're the man and you got family and friends that know you the man and just riding with you because they feel like you a meal ticket. Man, I, I feel like just continue to be you. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like that's the best advice. Like bro, don't let none of that attention steer you one way. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Just continue to find new challenges and be yourself. Mm -hmm. Like. That was uh, something that my coach overseas, uh, 
Nick, shout out to uh, Nana Vucinich, bro. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, Probably the best coach I played for when I was over the water. Mm -hmm. But every year we used to come back, like he'd ch tap in with me on a dinner, just having conversations, trying to pick my brain to see where I was at mentally mm -hmm. or how I was thinking or giving me like, hey, yo, blood, you look, you, you look good right now, bro. You're 30, but you probably need to start cross training in order to, you know, keep your endurance and like all, like that shit matter, bro. You mm -hmm. gotta keep your, uh, be yourself, keep your shit intact. Keep your circle intact, but continue to find new challenges. Just find ways to challenge yourself. For sure, yeah. That's man. something I'm telling myself right now. Like, keep finding new challenges, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause you see your kids, like I, even with him, I remember he was just so when he walk in the gym, everybody like, hey, that's dog. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it gotta be a little pressure, like everybody knowing who you is, and you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It just gotta be a pressure, okay, man. Yeah, just keep it, just keep it humble, bro. Continue to be yourself. Um, un I'm not, not don't undermine yourself. Like, understand what you're doing. Yeah, you know what I mean? For understand sure. what you're doing. For sure. But I say. Hold on to the morals and values, bro. Like, hold strong to that shit because you're going to need it throughout the journey. Yeah, hell you know yeah. Now, no blood, no foul, man. You know what I'm saying? You, <laughs> uh, Joe Crawford, Uncle Smooth, man. I feel like you got the two cats who play professional ball. Mm -hmm. You got the one cat that love ball. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He kind of like that that uh, that Ernie in the, in the group. Yeah. And like that, you know what I'm saying? Moving the segments and shit. Like, how y'all three? How y'all does it be y'all three? Um, uh, man, originally, bro, it was just originally it was just me and Smooth, man. We was uh we was talking about it, man. Like this was during that COVID period, bro. I was like, man, we was in a smooth basement, bro. Something like just, <laughs> yeah, just chopping it up for sure. Talk. Just like so. Originally, we went down there, bro, and recorded an episode in his basement. We was like, fuck it, man. I went smooth to basement. Yeah, bro. Okay. Like, and shout out smooth. I still need to get my posters, nigga. <laughs> so I went. I mean, I got. I had posters from JUCO that I had, bro, on the wall. So we put them all in smooth wall. Put a couple of overseas jerseys up. Yeah. Had the whole scene set. Did an episode. We told my man Vince, like, bro, we really want to do this. Mm -hmm. And as we was telling Vince, telling Vince, he like, yo, y'all gotta tap. Like, we gotta get Joe mm -hmm. on this joint. And yeah. You know, I know Joe, bro, since before Joe went to Renaissance. I know Joe. Since we was kids, like okay. younger kids, his, his cousin lived next door to me when I was uh, living in Southfield. Okay. So me and Joe been cool. So I'm just like, shit, let's let's get it. And then the first episode we did, bro, this shit was just like, it was just like a natural flow, bro. It wasn't yeah. even, it wasn't like us trying to mix. It, it was like, it was a harmony, bro. It For was sure. smooth. You know hell what I'm yeah, saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I was a little jealous at first, dog, because like this, <laughs> this podcast is supposed to be for basketball and sport, I mean, basketball and music. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be called 21 Game. Me and my, my two homeboys, my, my cousin's homeboy, two plus one, three, you already know, so it's going to be 21 yeah. game. And I kept on being on the head about it, like, dog, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. But they kept bullcrapping. Yeah. So I'm like, one day I hit him up, like, bro, I'm going to just do this shit by myself and just interview people who got stuff going on in the city. Yeah. And it's, I think that's probably was the best thing for me. Yeah. Because I don't think they would have been as consistent as me. No, nah, bro, yo, I mean, and, and uh, this, your, this your project, man, like, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I think that, hey, I... I we need more podcasts, bro. We need our city up, bro. For sure. I feel like we and, and we got to do a better job of upping one another as well, man. Mm -hmm. Because I be feeling like sometimes it be a crab in a barrel. Like it be like we had a couple of niggas that was like, you know, said on some hating ass shit this yeah. year. I was like, bro, for what though? Bro? <laughs> yeah, like, sure. what is we doing that you want to hate on some shit? Bro? Exactly. Like, exactly. Like we 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 moving with like a positive uh, idea in mind, bro. Yep. Like and what we doing is like. It's bringing a, like a positive energy For to the sure. city. So like other cities, that's why I'll be thinking like the difference with us in LA. Like, I ain't, it's crabbing a barrel mentality in a lot of places. But like in LA, I seen like the highest of the high mm -hmm. give respect to the lowest of the low For in sure. the game of yeah. basketball. No, you feel sure. what I'm yeah. saying? That, and that shit matter, dog. Like you do. it matter, you nigga. You walk into a gym and, and, and uh, motherfucking. You know what I mean? Jalen Rose say, hey, good, hey, way to play out there, dog. For sure. For like, sure. That, that shit mean, that's going to carry over. And some, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mean something when you see uh, uh, Darren Walton or Kalen Lucas yeah. telling one of your young dogs, hey, boy, way to get out. Bro, do you understand? Yeah. They're going to go home, dog. For sure. Big hell hell wise, yeah. Hype as hell. Nigga, I'm broke. Man. Yeah, he said, hey, that shit build confidence, bro. So it's For like sure. we got to give our kids these roses, dog. Man. We got to stop all this, this hating shit. Hell give them yeah. the roses they deserve, bro. Let the confidence build and let them showcase their talent no, across the globe. That's you know one dude I've been having on my radar I want to interview so bad but I think I, I would love to see him on y'all platform too who, who Jalen Rose oh yeah man I most definitely want to bro, bro. Jalen Rose man he he inspired bro like he he's very inspiring dog with what he doing dog yeah. so and he authentic too like I really want to tap in with him I don't know him personally bro but yeah that'd be dope yeah, that'd be I dope to see him on y'all stuff man and if y'all get him like this make sure you throw me I'm gonna tell you who I want to see on your podcast bro I'm gonna tell you who I want to see on your podcast bro 
I want to see Big Herc on here, bro. No. I want to see Big Herc hey, on Herc, here, bro. You heard him. I've been trying. I want to see Big Herc on here. I've been here. trying, dog. He a legend, bro. Yeah, man. One of, the, one of the best rappers from the city, dog, for real, Herc for real. probably one of my favorite rappers, like, in the city, dog. Hell yeah. Like, Shout out to, to Herc, man. Hey, hey, Herc, you heard it. Make it happen, dog. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do y'all prep for, uh, for, for y'all show, bro? Like, do y'all come up with... Calling each other, coming up with topics and shit like yeah, that. Y'all just go. So we got like a group. We got a group chat, man, and uh, that shit is pretty active, dog. Especially during the hoop season, like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's it's hella active, and we just kind of like just talking about latest topics and yeah. you know what I'm saying, debating certain shit for sure. And uh, man, yeah, that's how we got a lot of things get brought up. Uh, sometimes Vince, man, Vince is the mastermind, bro. Like. He behind the scenes, dog, but he 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 very creative in everything he doing, dog, mm -hmm. and he he come out and might say, yo, y'all might want to tap in on this, like, yeah, you know what I mean? hell so, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Now, is it hard because I y'all interview a lot of kids, bro? And I on this podcast, I it's hard for me to talk to you know, saying people under twenty one. Yeah, <laughs> now I, yeah, you gotta remember that you know they still youngest, bro, and, sure. and I know like sometimes like we record late, so we already like you know what I'm saying in the zone. Yeah, but uh, we got yeah. It, it, we, I don't think we never We ain't ran into like a problem Like yeah. you know what I'm saying Making it too much Cause like even when he was talking And he seemed like He, he seemed like the type of person That don't say too much dude. Yeah. A-Cuff But he like, was talking bro, though Hey that was probably One of my favorite Like A-Cuff It was just like Man he very mature bro And just yeah. like Talking to one of the homies Man his pops Real real good dude so His family can hoop Man yeah he got He got the, the lineage bro He got the They got the DNA bro Yeah they, you had G His brother uh, Play for um, the, um For Cavs before him then you got like uh, uh, you got uh, Tyson A. Cub, bro. Yeah, you got Kanye Matt. Jackson. That was, man. That's his cousin. See, I, I I didn't know they they lineage, and then you know Rashad Phillips is his yep, uncle. His I'm uncle. just like, shit. Yeah, yeah, Rashad Phillips. Dog. And I, was, I remember going to his little camp, and I'm like, oh shit, both our name Rashad. Like, yeah. I had the I had the braids. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to be that nigga. Yeah. He's the one person I felt like should have been to the lead, dog. Nah, for sure, bro. Like, like boy, he was a killer. He, um, I mean, even Kobe, you know, like. When you get the stamp from Kobe, bro, yeah, that you, lets you know that you for sure. Of, that shit politics though, man. Hell you know, yeah, there's a lot of politics involved. Now, last thing I want to ask with the podcast, bro, like what what's the what's the what's the goal with the podcast? What's what's some things y'all want to achieve with the podcast? Because I I just feel like niggas in the league for Pistons, like niggas should be coming and talk to y'all. I me? do want I, like I ain't gonna front like when it comes to like the basketball like side of it. I I, I want us to be like. The podcast that anybody that's dealing with basketball you like come it, you, yo come to it. It don't matter if you with the Pistons, you of them, Michigan State, mm -hmm. uh, if you a local, uh, you know what I'm saying, a local legend, or you a player that's in college but you playing out of state but you from here, like yeah. hey come tap in, For tell sure. us a story, yeah. you know what I mean because. Um, I think it's good for the younger kids to see this stuff as well, bro, to see these interviews and see, like, oh, okay, he prepped like this. Mm -hmm. Or this is how he speak in the interview. This is how he carry himself. Or this is what, how he pre. Um, this is what he eating in the summertime yep. and the offseason, bro. Like, all this stuff important. And then just giving the kids they spotlight, yeah, bro. Wasn't was giving out some game. Who uh, Wharton. Oh, man, he dropped a lot of gems, bro. Yeah, he, for sure. he dropped a lot Hell of gems. Yeah. That I was mean, a great interview. I remember seeing him at Chandler Park. Boy, a little tournament, man. My boy, that boy was nice, <laughs> dog. Dad was a coach. That boy, I'm talking about man, a nice crossover. Boy, that boy was tough. Let me, let me ask you one. Let me ask you a question. Who, who was uh? I don't know if you was gonna ask this, but who the who the toughest dude that you had to guard from the city? <laughs> this nigga made me want to quit basketball. This is what I got. <laughs> this is what I got older, bro. What is dog name? He a head coach, point guard, dark skinned dude, probably about thirty nine, forty. Oh, he got AU team. I was like, um, something life. Mm. What is dog name, bro? Life, life, something but life. But he was giving me the business at Basketball City. I never forget, dog. <laughs> Damn, I'm mad. I can't think of dog name. It was at Basketball City, bro. And it's like, all right, bet I'm gonna play off of him. Boom, he shoot that bitch. All right, I'm gonna play tough. Boom, boom, hit me with the crossover. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. damn, he fucking me up, dog. <laughs> yeah. But um, at, with somebody that that, that I, my boy Tone gave me some work at uh. At uh the Y back when he was in ninth grade, Tone Hickerbottom. Antonio Hickerbottom. Tone, oh, oh yeah, I know man. Tone, his son Cam used to play on my yeah, squad. Man. Yeah, he gave me work. Tone, uh, no, Tone, yeah, Tone. <laughs> Tone the bucket. Yeah. He gave me, he gave me some work, dog, <laughs> for real. And then see, this my I grew up with though. Um, Will Bullard, they, he played for uh, the Gold Trotters. Okay. And they, oh, we, well, that's left yeah. Yeah. with the bounce. Now, oh, now, shit, now me yeah. and him, we grew up like when I first moved back to the East Side when you we staying in Gross Point for a little, Harper Woods for a little bit. Okay. He was, I'm like, damn, who is dog? And we became real tight, dog. I remember, yeah, yeah, Will had. Will had, we had some battles up at uh, Holy Redeemer. You yeah. know, we used to have the, the, the league up there at Holy Redeemer, bro. Will, that shit was, Will, And then they like, Will, they don't know, Will only played a half a year high school basketball. Bro, Will bounce was ridiculous, <laughs> dog. We used to call him N1. 
That yeah. was his name in it, cause he, when I tell you, we get the tapes and this nigga go out there and do all the moves within an hour. No, he was like freakishly athletic <laughs> and he had like, Duh. like I don't know, like that. See, you know that trick shot shit he be doing, bro. Yeah. Like I still be a like he was doing all of that at Hollywood sure. Denver, nigga. Throw the ball this way and that bitch go over his head and, and go in the rim like I'm like damn. I, I'm mad that I can't figure out Dog's name, cause he was like he um he I know he's a short point you guard. You say he coaching now? I I, I, I want to say he he was is he coaching Ham Tremont? DJ? Yeah, Dennis did Froster. Did this nigga was working me out, dog? Oh man, <laughs> change the mentality, Abe. Hey. Oh man, this nigga was working me out. I was so pissed off, dog. <laughs> dog, hey, that's dog. crazy, dog. That's dog. wild as hell. You said that, dog. He was fucking me up, dog. We was at Basketball City at the. So you walk in Basketball City, the court to the left. I never forget, dog. And I was checking this nigga, dog. And I felt like I was. Not, I felt like I was straight. He changed my whole little life. Like. Listen, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That nigga gave me some buckets with the ball too. He. I was a fret. I, I wasn't even. I was like a senior in high school. I think I took a visit to Mary Grove College because that's where he went. He went to Mary Grove. Yep, yep. Because he was playing with uh, I think no. He he played before uh before Will. So yeah. man, we just went up there to hoop. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. And I, I ain't gonna lie, but at that time I'm thinking Mary Grove. Nigga, ain't nobody at Mary Grove College. Like, like that college ain't like that. Nigga like <laughs> Mary Grove. Man, going there, dog. This nigga was hitting all types of shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, like his jumper was crazy, bro. Yeah. And I hadn't seen like. You know what I'm saying? I ain't guarding nobody like that on no high school level, bro. Sure. It was just, he was just on some college <laughs> yeah. shit. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, damn, this nigga, he got yeah. some game to him. Yeah. Exactly. I, I know he don't know who I am. And he, I, I damn sure don't remember, but I just remember, I remember you, bro. <laughs> yeah, nah, he got some game. Yeah, exactly. so DJ, and he was laughing at everything. I'm like, dog, I want to punch him. Like, dog, this nigga That'd just be the some... most irritating shit. Like, we, for sure, if we go, you know, you go to basketball, see how Joe do, and you, Joe do Mars, and you go up to 12, he for sure gave me 11. God damn. <laughs> I said, yeah. Like, <laughs> it became so bad, though. Like, I was on an island. Like, niggas just, uh, nobody it'd wants to be like that some days, bro. It'd be like that some days, man. It'd be some days niggas just kind of just get at you, bro. Yeah. Like, now, outside of that, who, who, like, you said, who gave you some buckets, bro, that you kind of, like, made you mad? Man, this nigga, Rick Billings, dog. Ricardo Billings. Oh, I remember him. This wasn't even at a game, dog. It was a summertime. <laughs> this was like, it was, dog. So, look, man, it's long story short. Somebody told him and Cal Wu, both of them was at Oakland University. Somebody told him and Cal Wu. I was like, yeah, the nigga Dre Haynes and Jay Youngblood said they the best backcourt. Yeah. I think it was Crean ass. <laughs> Crean ended up transferring or something. He was out here just, I don't know. But, dog, uh, so I had ended up coming back home. My homie Wheat was like, hey, we about to go, let's go hoop up at Rogers. Yeah. So this nigga, uh, Rick Billings up there, Chauncey Shelton up there, Cal yeah. Wu up there. Yeah. Bro, this nigga Rick was going at me like, 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 <laughs> like, like this shit was personal, nigga. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> nigga, I'm like, and you know, I like so when a nigga going out, I get mad. I get, but this was like this was this nigga used reverse psychology. Like it was like judo. Was like yeah. he was using my anger against <laughs> nigga. Pump fake, <laughs> jump shot, jab, fuck dog. He, like, he was fucking me up. I was just like, Yo. so nigga, I, <laughs> nigga, I was so mad. I go home, got my shit, went left. I'm like this nigga. I'm like man. Yo, I call, uh, he was like, man, yeah, you know them niggas was saying that y'all was the best. Y'all, y'all was talking about y'all. I'm like, man, ain't nobody said that shit, man. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, dog? But yeah, it was just one of them days, bro. Yeah, nah, shout out to Rick. Rick was tough as hell, man, bro. Yeah, tough that, guard. That nigga, that nigga, Dennis Foster boy, man. Hey, man <laughs> you stopped me for who, man? <laughs> Joe, that's what I'm saying. The, that nah. nigga was giving me the business. Yeah. Like, and was like, wasn't even, he wasn't even trying. But he, 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 uh, <laughs> bro, he, he crafty, bro. He yeah. real crafty, shifty. Like, I mean, I was biting too off everything. And, and he can shoot. Yeah, like, he can, he can shoot. That's the thing. I'm like, bro. Like you know, how some people you be like, all right. He got handles. Let me get a little space so I can recover if he get me. No, nope. nope. No, nah, not with him. You can't look. You can't get DJ no space, bro. Yeah, he he bro. like man, shit. Nah. Yeah, man. Then me, and my cousin, we don't talk no more. But I remember one time it was his first time seeing me hoop, and um, I wanted to you know impress him. I was at Oberlin. My cousins they went to Oberlin uh, in Ohio, and this nigga was working me out. And like after the game was over, we out there dribbling. Yeah. I'm checking him. This nigga hit me with the iris and everything. Jay Will. This nigga get everybody bucket. Everybody move. He doing on me, dog. And he was fucking me up in front of this nigga, though. I had to redeem myself when he see me hoop later on, though. <laughs> I had to show him I could hoop, because that, with, that, with that little sample size, I was yeah, trash. <laughs> <laughs> so he came and got me. I started hooping with the grown-ups, and he like, all right, you can hoop, dog. Yeah, it was yeah. just a bad little bad little day, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I end everything off with top three, man. I give you category, you give me, or whatever topic, you give me your top three. All right. Give me your top three uh, moments in life. Top three moments in life. Yep. Uh, my son being born. For sure. Uh, I I know it is. A, all right, I'm, I'm gonna take the family aspect out because right. my I mean, but my son and my daughter move the most definitely. I sure. put those in. You one. put that in one. Yeah, I put that in one. Uh, 
Shoot, man. Shoot. See, man, basketball. I mean, see, I ain't, I ain't about to sit here in front, bro, and be like, yo, I'm not. I, I, bro, I'm basketball yeah, DNA to, yeah. to the death of me, bro. So like, a lot of that shit that I did on the journey, man, mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, like winning that national player of the year, shit, bro. That that was like a huge accomplishment for me. You for know sure. what I'm saying? For sure. Um, I'm trying to think. What's what else? What else? Damn. Shit. If I from hear your story. I think just getting humble coming back home to the crib was a moment. Nah, hey, hey yo, so no, nah, you were 100% right. Like, I feel like that's the defining moment of, dog, like, who I really am as For sure. a man. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like, who are who is Jay Youngblood? Hey, I'm a father, bro. I, I'm, a, I'm a mentor. I love training my kids. I'm devoted to training my kids. I want the best for all the kids I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yeah, man, that's just who I am, man. Sure. Really dedicated to being the best father I can be, bro, and consistently putting my best foot forward. For sure. Give me your top three Hooper's turn to media. All right. We got Jalen Rose. And if that shit true about ESPN, that's some bullshit. I heard that they, it's a rumor that they, they fired him. Damn. Him and uh, my man, who the dude who do the commentary with uh, Mark Jackson. Yeah, um, I seen Van Gundy go. Van Gundy. Yeah. I said Van Damn. Gundy and Jalen Rose, dog. That's, I'm mad as but hell. But you man. know, like, this shit wild, man. But Jalen Rose, most definitely, I think Hooper uh, turned media. Mm -hmm. Mark Jackson, I like Mark Jackson a lot. For sure, even though Go State, that's some bullshit. Yeah, they, NBA some bullshit. Man. Yeah, I just like I like his style of commentating during the game. For bro. sure, and love then, it. Uh, man, shit, I think Barkley, bro. For sure, yeah, Barkley, bro. Barkley <laughs> just be just so yeah. blunt and raw. No, for sure, he like, don't care. Man, it's like talking to your uncle or some hell shit, yeah. bro. Like, hell yeah, give me you know. your top three hoopers ever. Favorite or just top three hoopers, like. Like, All right, be your favorite, your favorite hoopers ever. So my my top three favorite, it'd be Penny. Okay. Uh, T Mac. For sure. And whew, damn that third one, dog. It'd probably be Zeke, bro. Okay, for sure. For sure. Top three Detroit hoopers. Top three Detroit hoopers. Yeah. Most definitely throwing my man Mo Eger in there. For sure. Yeah, he's a beast. Uh, Steve Smith. For sure. And That's another person I want to see on y'all shit. Yeah, I, I really Smith. Hey, listen, bro. I'm a, all right. Let me do the name. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to Smitty. So Mo Eger, Steve Smith, and then uh, shit, man. I ain't gonna shit. See Webb, bro. See Webb. For is, sure. Uh, Hell yeah. Like you can't deny. Like I don't get. See Webb's a monster. Hell bro. yeah. Like, Niggas forget about yeah. boy. He was, everybody be talking about Tim Duncan, KG, and he he was giving them problems. Bro, see Webb a real nigga. Yeah. Hey, look, look, dog. See Webb. See Webb. Was over on Greenfield and Puritan, dog. Mm -hmm. He he was over there for some, dog. These kids, he stopped the ice cream truck, bro. And literally, I'm talking about down there, bought the whole fucking truck, truck for all the kids, like <laughs> bought yeah. everything for no, him, dog. Like I fuck with C Web, bro. Hell yeah, for sure, for sure. What you about to say about what's name, Smitty? Oh, Smitty, that was my favorite move, dog. Oh the, shit, the, yeah. Uh, the Smitty on the base. Like you ask anybody that know me that hoop, like yeah. you ask them, like yo, that nigga Youngblood used to do the Smitty. Man, what? Like, that was <laughs> my go-to yeah. move, for dog. Sure, so for yeah, sure. shout out Smitty on that. Top three current hoopers. Top three current hoopers. Um, oof. Yeah, all right, I'm a big Kawhi fan, bro. So for sure, hell yeah. I think like when he healthy, like he one of the realest oh, niggas yeah. in the game. Like hell he yeah. he caused a lot of problems. For sure. So I go Kawhi. Uh, shit. No, I can't. I can't deny Jokic, bro. No, you can't. You can't. I dog. can't deny it, dog. Can't. Like that shit I seen. The shit man. that he can do. So it's ridiculous, shit. especially for him not to be able to move like that. Like that nigga be. I go Kawhi, Jokic, and then um, Kawhi, Jokic, and then I would probably if if I'm starting my roster, bro. Mm -hmm. I need KD, bro. I fuck with KD. Sure. I think no, for sure. KD. Last out three. Give me your top three favorite teams. Like like the old four Pistons and shit like okay. that. Okay. The the 90 uh, Pistons. The okay. 90s Pistons. For 1990 sure. Pistons. For sure. The the 95 Orlando Magic. Yeah, it was hard, boy. Shit. Man. Especially when they got Horace Grant over there. It was... Bro, they was so fucking cold, dog. Man. I, I love that team. And then, uh, probably, yeah, the 04 Pistons probably my third okay. favorite team, bro. See, my favorite team was that what's name, though? That 2000 Lakers, though. And they had that first oh. championship with Glenn, yeah, Glenn, hey, Glenn Rice, nigga. No, Glenn Rice, bro. Nigga. <laughs> Be hey, sure. Silent like, X Factor over there, nigga, sure. hitting the open three and shit. Hell bro. yeah. Now, um, this last question, man. If you don't, I forgot to tell you this off camera. If it's not a detailed story, then we can pass. <laughs> no, drunk, no, come on. A drunk moment. 
All and right. details, because a lot of people be like, you know what, I drunk some liquor, I got drunk, and then, damn, I forgot it. No, okay, all right, let's get into it. <laughs> I'll right. take it, rewind this shit. All right, so we, um, man, we was, in, we was in Abu Dhabi playing in this uh, West Asian tournament, right? <laughs> okay, okay, that's how funny already, though. Yeah, so we in <laughs> Abu Dhabi playing in the West Asian tournament. Um, tournament over with, I'm with this uh, old head, bro, who's on our team, nigga named Lee Benson. So Lee, it's Lee, like old head too. Yeah, old, I'm talking about. When I say old school, old school to the core, bro. Ball head go to. This nigga like on his last couple. He was on his way out of the game. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Lee. So Lee Benson, like, hey, young blood, let's, let's go drink. Let's go drink. Let's go drink. I'm like, fuck. All right, cool. So we go to this spot, bro. We in Abu Dhabi, bro. Uh, drinking, drinking, taking shots. And I'm not even really like a heavy drinker like that, but just fucking with Lee, man. This nigga. So by the time I'm, I'm. Drinking every every shot that he sent it to me, bro. This nigga, I just one thing I remember that night, dog, from in the club, yeah. is that he had this 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 tall Asian joint with him that he just <laughs> just did not let leave his side, dog. Everything we doing, bro, you can think of this. Hey, baby, here you go, yeah, like, yeah. This young blood over here, like, so, dog. He like, I mean, this nigga, we in here, we've been in there for about a good two or three hours, dog. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go to the crib. Yeah. No, no, blood. No, I'm like, so this nigga didn't want to leave. I just snuck out. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm drunk as hell, bro. Like I'm like super drunk, head ringing, dog, barely. So I'm like, man, I call the cab. Cab pick me up, <laughs> drop us off, drop me off at the hotel. Now this hotel, this shit super fire. So I'm so drunk, bro. I'm thinking this nigga dropped me off in front at the door. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The nigga <laughs> dropped me off like it's another part right here where you get dropped off and then you kind of got to walk across. Yeah, to get to the, the door. Yeah, to get to the door. Yeah. But mind you, like when you walk on the sidewalk, it's these two pools. Yeah. It's a pool, it's a, it's a pool of water right here and it's a pool of water. It's a real fancy shit. Yeah. So I get out, nigga, looking at my phone and shit. Look at my phone. I remember putting my phone in my pocket, bro, and just tumbled over and this nigga no. just lost my balance, nigga. Fell into the motherfucking pool. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, no. nigga, get up. The goddamn true religions is all fucked. Yeah, <laughs> Chuck's shit. all wet and shit, yeah. dog. No, yeah. So I go in my room. It's like three o'clock in the morning. My teammate, this nigga looking at me like, <laughs> I ain't know what the fuck. I was like, man, that dog. Then he leave. Man, you ain't gonna believe what the fuck happened. Dog. I just fell in the motherfucking pool out here, Duh. dog. So that was like my drunk moment. Yeah, I'm like, that shit where wasn't nigga, deep. You would die, nigga. Man, bro? I <laughs> fucking injured a damn koi fish and shit. Duh. <laughs> Damn goldfish over here hurting shit. Nigga, no. I just fell in the pool full of fishes and shit, bro. Was, nah, I bet that shit somebody was on one of the security guards nah, nah, be watching. Man, somebody had to see that shit, but it, it was like so late, bro. I was the only nigga out there. It was like, yeah. I was looking, nigga. I'm like, shit, ain't nobody see that shit. But Duh. I walk into the room, half my pants wet, shit, shirt soaked. Duh, that, that shit was just one of wild head. ass moments. All right, man. good story, dog. Because a lot of these dicks, <laughs> they've been fucking up on these stories, bro. <laughs> it's to the point I wasn't going to ask a question no more, dog. He's like, nah, that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was some man. Them nights overseas, bro. Niggas would just be getting pissy drunk, man. Like, man, I it, bet. It was dog. some good times. Dog. Hell yeah. Now, anything you want to leave the people with? Any positive message or whatever you want to give the people before we get up out of here? Nah, man. Just keep keep going. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Just spread love. I feel like you know what I'm saying. We right now we in this. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't want us to be too 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 caught up in the social media shit, man. Because sure. it's like, man, niggas are damn near willing to get their ass whooped for a double tap. Hell you know what yeah, I'm saying? you already like, know. Bro, we got to slow down, man. The kind just build the shit up the right way. Keep doing what we're doing. So, no, nah, just keep going, man. Stay motivated. Sure. Uh, I'm doing I'm taking my own advice. Staying motivated. Continuing to build. And that's it, man. For sure, man. Where can, where can you follow you on the social media, bro? Speaking uh, of social media. Man, you can follow follow my page, uh, at JBlood13. And then you can follow the training page, at Faith and Focus. Mm. Um, and then on, what am I on Twitter. Twitter is JYoungBlood13. Mm. And uh, Facebook, just Jay Youngblood. Yeah, I'm still I'm active on all those. You know what I'm saying? If you want to tap in on the training, uh, hit me up. Mm. Uh, we taking a lot of kids right now, man, for the summer sessions. Uh, we getting it in. For sure. Very inspired right now, bro. So I really want, if anybody has anybody, no matter the skill level, high, low, you know what I'm saying, they're just learning or they've been in the game for a minute, come tap in with us at Faith for and sure. Focus. For sure, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming no, out, man. Appreciate you having me, man. This Big fan of the podcast and shit, man. Everything y'all are doing over there, man. And uh, like I said, man, shout out to everybody, 165, J Youngblood, you already know what it is, man, MVP, ain't no competition, man, we out.